Oh, it's cracked up to be. We got 13 and 14. Scott Soroy to Keith Beaupre. Those the first balls we've seen here. Soroy's can't pick up this three pin. Beaupre on the 1 8 9. Cranks in, trips off a piece of wood, and he's got the 1 9 remaining. Scoreboard here. So Roy's both pray, both pray, both with a 10. So Roy's digs in, he's got everything except the 10 pin remaining. He's only got the five pin. Paul's Russell and his mic on, and we're going to have Paul Grant in just a moment here. My name is Greg Bauer on Candleton Bowling Network. Second ball coming up. Soroy's on the spare bid. Format is two match points per string and two for total. I think my scoreboard's just a bit too big. Scott picks it up. Does it, I'm afraid. It's, uh, I think that's a little off for you. A little off the height of the pins, that'll make it better. Bo Prey can complete the 10 this time around. Dave Chestercove on the right, and uh, apologies, I'm not fully familiar with the Maine bowlers. Got Pelkey on the left. Yep. Tom Pelkey just moved to Maine <laughs> recently. With Michelle Ward. He's on lane 14 here at Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at the men's 2023 ICC World Championship matches. Uh, third and final shift today. Back at it tomorrow morning. 9 a.m. local time. It's Atlantic time, 8 o'clock East Coast time. Every day through Saturday, including the playoffs, Friday night and quarter semis and finals Saturday until we wrap it up. There's a nice shot for a spare for Tom Pelkey. Two spares for the team. Dave Chestakov almost leads up the 10. Trying to get his team to three consecutive tens to start their first three boxes. We'll cover some of the stats throughout the match. Tom Pelkey just turned 56 recently. Dave Kestico makes it three for three for his team on 10 boxes, 30 overall through three. Again, welcome Greg Guya. Great to be back with you again. As soon as we get the uh, standings printed out for the first two matches, we'll put those up. A lot of surprises though, so far. Including some we've caught on air. Of course, you can watch all our matches on demand if you missed any. And we apologize, we're supposed to bring Avon Valley lanes and Lucky Strike, but due to the technical difficulties reaching over to the lanes 11 and 12, the angle just didn't work out. Uh, so we're back to 13 and 14, which we were originally scheduled to do anyway. So we have Stars and Strikes in South Paris, Maine. Yeah. I'd say the reviews were mixed. Some of you liked it, but it was a tough strain. It was tough for us as well, unfortunately. Pelkey, six in the spare, 16 through one. Cannot connect on the four horsemen. Chestakov, good bid. Again, so close to a spare. Come up short by one pin both times. From my perhaps limited point of view, I seldom see Dave bowling th these days. He doesn't uh, bowl much. He's had a 132 average one season. Mm. Very good ball in his prime. High single 198, high triple 472, and a very good high five of 741. And he grabs another 10. They got four tens on the board. And Tom Pelkey, that box. Uh, Pelkey had a nine, he's 25 through two. Okay, thank you, couldn't see it from here. Way back, way, way back here in the bleachers in a sense, the DJ booth. Not doing any scratch records, any of those sh -sh 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 things, right? No, nah, no. Nah. Sampling, what do you call it? I forget the call. No, I don't think, I don't think Fairlanes is hiring us for their glow bowling anytime <laughs> no. soon. They've been very kind to us, but I don't think they're gonna let us just do whatever we want back here. Let's break out the karaoke. Uh, Russ Neely of Santa Diamond. You sing, Greg? Yeah, Mike Jakes has given the diamond sign to us. <laughs> is, that a, is that a running joke about the diamond? I guess for them it is. 
First time I see him do that. Yeah. Well, you saw it on camera there. Maybe someone else can give us some we'll insight. See, that. We'll see Mike Jake's next string. Another great bowler from Maine. 14710 for Scott Douglas. The doctor's in the house. I'm afraid to ask what else it could mean. Neely missed everything. Russ Sr. in the Hall of Fame, his father. Russ and Jody Neely, Russ Jr. here, and Jody did a great job running the 14 lane stars and strikes in South Paris, Maine. Douglas can't connect either. Russ, a 117 league bowler, his highest for his career, 184 high single, high triple 418, and a high five, a 667, a good batting average in baseball, both with an eight. Russ would be 55 later this month from South Paris, Maine, eventually Westbrook, Maine. Scott Douglas from Marshfield, Massachusetts. Bulls out of alley cat lanes, Kingston, Mass. Spread eagle plus the nine for Neely and a half Worcester for Scott Douglas. The younger brother of Tim, the Tornado Douglas. Tim Douglas won the Easter Classic this year and won the first ladder in season three of Candlepins for Cancer. You can watch on Candlepin Bowling Network. Neely, 4-2 split. Douglas trying to work out of this mess. Good Ooh. try. Goes to the king, but stops short. Put the brakes on. Had an automatic braking system there, wasn't it? ABS? Yep, that's it. Unless you're pumping the brakes manually. Fred Toffmeyer to our left there for Avon Valley Lanes. Having a great day today. Had what a 156 earlier. Yeah. Ooh, few, few, few. My goodness. I thought Neely was in the gap there. Far from it. He's got a great out of that. And Douglas picks this one up. Yep, he picks a, up a couple in the process. One of my favorite Canadian programs actually taught the difference uh, between the sorts of braking. Uh, Canada's worst driver ran on Discovery Channel for several years with a Andrew Young husband. That's a great show. That was like not that was not me, by the way, on the driving the car. <laughs> nah, you learn the metric just fine. Don't worry about it. But um, yeah, they got the sign it. Uh, that shows all on YouTube as well. That's that's a lot of fun. Here's Mike Jakes won the Main States APH Average for Handicap State Tournament. I call him Mr. Nine Pin. He's buried. Hit a lot of nine drops that weekend. A 10 string final on Candlepin Bowling Network. 4 1 split. Lane 14. Missed left. Leads up the 1 3 6 in front, the 9 behind the 3. The tornado, Tim Douglas. Good shot. Can't get to the king, the 5. Tim also from Marshall, Massachusetts. He'll be turning 26 towards the end of the year. Current Easter Classic champion, 2023. And defeated Calvin Locke in a thriller. He gets a 10, Mike Chase gets an eight. So stars and strikes, no marks the first seven boxes. And they trail right now, 69, 68. So they actually, they're up by one somehow. So no, nobody's really pinning really well. No no marks at all actually, right, Craig? Well, yeah. Any marks yet? Uh, one, yeah, right? Yeah, we got a couple. I see so one for stars and strikes. And one still to fill for stars and strikes as well. But uh, Hatchaman have only given less than 10 in one box. Douglas for a nine, drop again. Does a lot of those. Mike Jakes, one, two, four, the eight, this time behind the two. For a spare, just missed right. Mike Jakes did, now he has Tim Douglas on lane 13. Aaron Monk to the Spare. 20 in the ball through two after that 10 box. Mike Jakes ends up with a nine, 17 through two. And here it is, Mike Morgan called Chris Winniards at the age of 19 all world, because he bowled really well in the tournament. He's like, who is this guy? He goes, you're all world. And he's known as the wizard. I can't understand why, but he's the wizard. And now he's all world. He's a terrific bowler. Last year's number one seed in the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour, Class A Northern Conference. Cat, the anchor of Friday Night Pro League team. We'll see you on November 17th, our next Friday Night Pro League game of the week. Now this week because of the Worlds. We take on Dave Barber's extra lanes at Central Park Lane. So Central 2, extra 7.30 start time, November 17th on Canopin Bowling Network on YouTube and Facebook. First time Kevin, Kevin McNally. He bowls at Bangor Brewer Lanes, and he lives in Newport, Maine, near Newport Entertainment Center. He bowls in Bangor Brewer Lanes and Brewer, Maine. But he's bowling for Stars and Strikes in South Paris, Maine. Got it? 
So I'm time of 10, winning ours, five and 10. I'm just, I'm just seething with jealousy that I'm not close to Bangor. I'd be up at Penny Lane Bar and Grill more often. For a spare, a little thin, almost went. Forever. When he asked for the wood, got it, spare, nice shot. 10 of the ball to stop the first of three for him. Mike Jakes, I'd rather Kevin McNally, Mike Jakes just up a minute ago. Obstructive view back here, hard to see. I'm gonna get the step stool, uh, Greg, again. It is really hard to see back here. Well, having the big names in the back helps us out, it, I tell you. I got blocked out totally that time. Starting to learn. I've got to own. flip my score sheet, that would have helped. Kevin McNally. 50 years young, another July birthday. You gotta feel good about July birthdays. One, two, nine, ten. Winnie Ars on a spare. The postman on the head pin has five, 15 through one. Three, six, ten right, seven, eight left. Kevin, a 120 league bowler, 125 his best year. Good effort, falls short of the 10. He has a high single of 193, a high triple of 463, and a high five of 696. His parents were bowlers. He's been bowling for 40 years himself. Winning eyes for two in a row. Just missed the object pin, the three. I uh, came back almost. I'll go over format and uh, score recap in a sec. Touched it. He's a wizard, though, so he can, he can, he can uh, demand certain actions on the lanes. Uh, even Magic has its limits. Nice 10. McNally. And that puts him at 20 through 2. And when he has, doinks it for a 9, he's at 24 through 2 up that spare 5 and 9. A little impolite of that wood to be in the way like that, but let's take a look at the scores here real quick. And I'll just go over the format as well. This is uh, not a little line scoreboard. This is a round robin, two divisions of 12 teams, left and right, 12, 13, 14, 24. And uh, 11 matches round robin, two match points per string, two per total, and the top five in each division move on to the playoffs. Later on, with the top seed getting a bye all the way to the semifinals, pa bypassing two knockout rounds in effect. So we have a tsunami and a tornado on the hatchet man, Rich Lamoni's team. It's not Lamone, by the way, it's Lamoni. Heath Bopray, the tsunami, I call him, and I call Tim Tornado, Tim Douglas a tornado. Scott Sorice, a 5 2 split. He had a 23 start. Keith Bopre, pair of 10s. Scott turning 58 in December. Bopre missed that chance. Sorice goes right, 1 4 7 10. Scott from Scohegan, Maine. Averaging 118 nowadays, still born at a high level. 127 is best ever season ending average for a high average for a season. Heath gets a nine, 29 through three, and Swice a nine to match, 32 through three, matching nines. And Scott, if you don't know Scott Swice, he has a 223 twice in his career, a 200 and a 201, four 200 pluses in his career. High triple of 496, high five, 775. Bopre, 4 7, 5 right. Updating the standings after this box. Sorice in the pocket. Breaks the triangle. Go, 7 goes, not the 8. Gunning for a spare on lane 13. After this box, we can update the first two matches. We'll post those on Canop and Chat after the match 3 today. Yep. Also available on leaguesecretary.com offhand. Bopre has to wait for a rolling wood. So Wood's got Sir Royce if it were his turn. He got it, what a shot. Yeah, that's good. Outstanding. And he luckily went two in a row, 39 the ball through four, pinning well. <coughs> Scott Sir Royce looking for a second mark. He's got the eight pin, a plank angled in front. Should go, and it does. 42 in the ball through four. Stars and strikes, and Hatchman a close one early on. It's 121-120, the Hatchman lead, and they have two marks to one in their favor also, Greg. All right, left division, Team Abel and Team Central Park Lanes, 14 and two apiece. 10 and six, all of Fenway Academy, Academy Lanes, uh, the defending champs, and Team 2.64. On the right side, Maria Sub, 16 and 0. Prosperity U, 14 and two. A plus accounting, we've seen them already, 12 and four. Hatchman, here they are, 12 and four. Bowling Ball Mafia, 10 and six. And uh, where are we?
are we here? Stars with Strikes still looking for their first match point. Thanks, Greg. And the top team in each group gets a bye. So two teams get a bye, one from the group left and one in the group right. All right, back to live action. Dave Chestikov drops down four. He had a pair of tents. Tom Pelkey has a spare six and nine, I believe. 25 through two coming in. He's got a 5-1 split. Chestikov, good bid. Can't get to the five and eight. Heck of a try. Pelkey, only a couple there. Maybe three now. Three it is. Three, six, seven. Chestikov, nice penny, 10. Three tens. Perfect game in Candlepin. All tens, spares, and strike. And Davis, perfect so far. Yeah. Once he finds that head pin, he can put it all together because he hasn't found one yet, but he's accurate on two or three. Nines and tens generally lead to spares and strikes, usually overall. Tom Pelkey gets a nine. He's at 34 through three. Hatchman, a slim two pin lead, 131, 129. They're up two spares to one. Now, of course, you're getting the spares, you're counting them six at a time, but you know, single pins can absolutely outdo it. it takes longer, but it can. Chestikov off to the left, gets seven, has the one, six, ten. Pelkey, thin hit in the pocket, and he gets a break, it's nine somehow. Generous hit, that looked like a four, five, one split, he has the seven pin for a spare. Tom's Finley also bold. Oh, Chesco got robbed by the wood there, doinked it. He has a 198 high single, high triple, 742, high five, 741. Hobbies are golf. There's a spare for Tom Pelkey for stars and strikes. 44 and a ball through four, four's a wild for Tom Pelkey. And Dave, that wasn't there. Seven, just 37 now through four. Three tens and a seven. Close one here. Yep, four marks to three. Stars and strikes takes the lead by one. 139, 138. And the marks are even. Is that right? Or is two to one still marks? Let's see. Greg, what do those two dots mean on the screen here? Uh, those are the marks up, so two and two. Okay. Yeah, I was just about to mention, actually. Uh, yep, yellow blips indicate uh, spares working. All right, so two marks apiece, actually. Spares or strikes, I should say. Just okay. marks up. Okay. Scott Douglas, three down, seven to go. Preston Jr., five down, five to go. And Scott uh, really getting better and better every year. Julius Bone with his brother likes the competition. Makes him better. Nice shot, spare for Russ Neely Jr., He'll put today's match with a 141 on the first shift today. First match of three in that first string. This team looking for his first points, as Greg said earlier. Douglas picks him up for a 10, 28 through three in the first of three. Over 835 videos in climbing, always free, never a charge. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Candlepin Bowling Network. Like and follow us on Facebook as well. Get your friends and family to do so also. Lots of great videos, a lot of main matches as well. Friday Night Pro League every Friday night during the regular season, 35-week season, plus the playoffs. Has a strike for Douglas. The brother of the tornado gets a strike. 38 plus two through four. Neely on the bonus, seven. Not a bad lead, three, five, nine. Wood in between the three and five. 33 through three, threes a wild. His father, Russ Sr. in the Candlepin Bowling Hall of Fame. For another one, he's got it, he's got two in a row. 43 in the ball through four. Stars and strikes up by eight right now. And they are even three spares apiece. Fourth ball is Tim Douglas on the right for the Hatchetman. Mike Jakes on the left for stars and strikes. <coughs> Tim mentioned 122 right now. The season ending average is 121 for the whole season. Ooh. Look at that shot, perfect shot, bullseye shot, a spread eagle plus the eight, three in the fill, 23 through two. That's lead to five for stars and strikes. Mike Jakes has the five, nine opportunity, but Greg Guya calls them the pesky two pinners. 
Here they go just barely of one and two times without Wood. Stats by Kendall from Mowing Network. Yeah, Pesquier with that Wood in front. There's not covering the whole pocket, so this is not a gimme for Jakes. We can ride the rail, I suppose. He had a high piece of Wood, missed it. Yeah, he was. Jake, Jakes, rather. Jakes was putting all kinds of finesse into that shot, trying to get it to go. Tom Pelkey is the captain of the Stars and Strikes, not Russ Neely. A nice bit by B uh, Douglas, won't go. That'll be a nine, 32 through three. And it wraps around the five and a nine, goes Jakes for an eight, 25 through three. A close one so far, 174, 170. Stars and Strikes for Maine, up by four. And it's three marks to two in their favor also. So you can see in your screen, can they see that in your screen at home, Greg, the three marks of the first three bowlers? Yeah, yeah. What you okay. see is what they see. Okay. Simple as that. People are a little sad that we didn't get the Avon Valley match and Lucky Strike, and we're very sorry about that, but it just wasn't able to be done, although. Yeah, we just couldn't get the angle and the uh, too many obstructions in the way and the scoreboard, so we had to go this way. That's what we plan on doing anyway, so we apologize for if we promised that didn't come through. Definitely good intentions. Yeah. Mike Jake's 247 spare chance. Douglas looking at the one, two, five. I may move the camera in a second. First this. Missed the head pin, and the wood spins around mm. in front, but won't carry. The wood coming to play. That can still roll back and knock it down for a spare. Jake's missed inside, leads up the two. Once it hit a fair pin, it stays fair. Once you land to the channel, it's foul and stays foul. Crazier things have happened this crazy game of Caleb and Bowling. Nothing like it. I'm gonna, you know. Nah. They're going to send Al Nelson down there. Check it out. This holiday season, all season long, please consider Kenelpin gift cards. It's a great stocking stuffer, but more importantly, it's a gift all year round. Makes a great birthday, anniversary, Mother's Father's Day, graduation gift. Any occasion, Kenelpin gift cards, a gift that keeps on giving. Please support your local bowling centers. Invest in Kenelpin Bowling, the gift that keeps on giving. Without the centers, we don't have Kenneth Mullins, so please help them out any way you can. Douglas right on, picks it up. He made the trip worthwhile. And Jakes picks it up. They get matching 10s. Tim 42 through 4. Mike Jakes 35 through 4. Are the, uh, uh, is that right, Greg? Uh, Are those spares? I couldn't see. They, they've marked that a uh, spare for Jakes. Excuse me. So that's okay. The delay threw me off a little bit there. So let's see what they got. Oh no no no! It's ten. It's ten. I, I thought so. I thought they put. Said, I thought so. I had it right the first time. They put a spare in the scoreboard. That's what messed me up. We got it. I know. Sometimes I zone out. <laughs> sometimes. Forty-two through four for Douglas. Uh, now we move bowlers. I'm not going to say what we do is easy, but we have a ton of fun doing it. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of stuff on the fly, a lot of moving parts. No editing. You see us raw, mistakes and all. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Winnie has the ball is strike. All world shot, second mark of the string, 34 plus two through three in the first of three from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at the 2022, 2023 now. 2023 ICC Men's Championship World Tournament. Kevin McNally wobbled around trying to go left turn. Five to nine hold up. <laughs> Kevin 193 high single high triple 463 high five 696 gets a 10. Three tens to start, his first to three. That way you can see 13 and 14 over the scoreboard, under the scoreboard. And okay. I think that'll be fine. Because people sure. wanted to see 11 and 12, so that'll be a good compromise. There's a captain, Mitch Lamoni, the captain of the hatchet man, removing that ball on lane 13. So Kevin McNally has a mixed double state championship winner in 2001 with Nancy Vigu, terrific bowler from Maine. His team state championship in 2001, a state record at the time, with Scott Soroyce here hearing his team today, Dave Vigu, brother of Nancy Vigu, Jim Killam, and Tom Tremblay. When he has three that time, working a strike, McNally, thin hit. He gets seven, five, nine, ten, left to right. What to work with. 
Kevin Austin enjoys golf and cornhole. Not quite for winning. Ours is still a five and ten. So every day, the rest of the week till Saturday, we have three matches every day, three string formats. Qualifiers end the second shift, the second match on Friday afternoon. Around three o'clock, probably around four o'clock, the playoffs will start round one. <laughs> what a try, the nine wiggles oh, and no. wobbles. Weebles wobble, but wow. they don't fall down. Well, McNally didn't fall down at the line either, I suppose, so the pin was just responding in kind. That's a little rude. Yeah, that's a certified hands to head moment. You were completely hit nine, that was rude. We love everyone, but just hate all the pins. 20 yards. Ackett, as usual, picks up one for a nine. 51 half. McNally gets a 10. It's four tens, 40 through four. Correction, 51 through four for Chris Winnie, I should say. 51 through four. And another 10 for McNally is 40 through four. So. Well, let's see. And back to the top of the order, Paul Gregg, Dan Castle, Greg Gouillard, Canlepin Bowling Network, the 2023 ICC Men's World's Championships from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes. Nothing like Canlepin Bowling. Great experience. It'll be louder and louder as the week goes on. The playoffs, it'll be deafening like it was yesterday at the singles knockout. Congratulations to Blake Doucette. Won a great match against Calvin Locke, 120 to 109. Available on Candlepin Bowling Network. All these matches, pretty much, you can see on YouTube on Candlepin Bowling Network as well. And again, hit that subscribe button. And that bell to get notified when we go live also so you don't miss a box. There you go. Coverage in lanes 13 and 14 all week. And it's delay <laughs> ready to start now. Ball of switch sides. Scott Sorois. Part of that state record at the time with Kevin McNally, lead up bowler on lane 14. And talk about great owners, Russ Neely and Jody Neely. What a great job they do. A great crowd down there at Stars and Strikes, South Harris, Maine. Also the home of Mark Hollywood Smith and Chris Merrill, who won the Easter Classic two years in a row before Tim Douglas won it last year. Scott, two in that ball, four in the seven. Beaupre, the tsunami, another piece of wood coming out of play. He has the one, two, four. He's on a spare, six, make it seven. Yep. 46 uh, through four. Working on this. And Scott Sorois was on a spare also. And he got five. Is it 44 yep. through four? Is that right, Greg? Yep. Right. And Russ Neely Jr. takes a trip down memory lane, 13. All right. Here we go, people. How many people are out there? I think we still got, yeah, north of 200. Please share this match to your friends and family. Get the word out about Canlepin Bowling. Nothing like it. Please support your centers. Beaupre missed right. Ball spins around as the world turns. <laughs> Old soap opera. Soroy's trying to bounce back. Gives a ride. Will it go? Oh, the wood spun around. Hit the five, but it holds up with the eight. And that'll be an eight box. Keith Beaupre gets a nine. So Soroy's 44 through four, Keith Beaufre. A correction, 52 now through five for Soroy's. Keith Beaufre, five's a while, 55. Who says you can't drive 55? <laughs> Sammy Hagar says I can't drive 55. Great video, by the way. I'm not gonna do it right now, my throat is shot, otherwise I'd really like I, 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 I got a hundred dollar bill, Bob Lee, that's my voice, so I can't do it. So, sorry, I'm not I can't do it. karaoke while I'm here until Saturday night if we do it. I'll sound like Johnny Most, otherwise the old Celtics announcer. I wouldn't for your health. 6-10, spare chance for Scott Sorice. For a spare. Up the wall, got it! Nice shot! 62 and a ball through six for Stars and Strikes. Scott Sorice. Ball for a 5-2 split. Dan Castle. You got something for us, Dan? Okay. Uh, Paul was asking about the viewership. Right now we have 96 viewers on YouTube as of the last time I looked and 114 on YouTube. So slow down a little bit. We were up to three 500 earlier. We'll probably pick it up again. 
And I've been wandering around a little bit watching the teams and just saw a great double strike by Jake Cook from the Harry's All-Stars team. So there's that. Keith okay. Beaupre gets a nine. Uh, Beaupre now is at 64 through six. Yep. Brings up Pelkey and Chester Cove. Okay, close one. Eight pin lead for the Hatchetman. <coughs> They're on the left, Dave Chester Cove. And then number two spot, Tom Pelkey. On a spare, 44 in the ball. A diamond. And where's Mike Jake's diamond signal that time? I didn't see it. Mike, Mike, sli Mike slipping. He's slipping. <laughs> 50, 50 through four for Pelkey. We're giving Mike a good, good yeah. old hard time. We got a good fun of Second six fill for Pelkey. <laughs> Look, go. Oh, the five goes down. So many illegal blocks in the back here. I love it. Despite Tom Pelkey's delayed thing, the spare went. And Dave Jesterko dunks one. We're going to talk to Mr. Ninepin over here in just a moment. Dave Jesterko, 47 and a half plus one. After the, after the spare, Phil, we'll talk to uh, Mr. Ninepin in uh, just a moment. Talk, talk to the mic when we talk to you in a second. All right, let's talk to him now. Mr. Nine Pentecost, Mike Jakes. Hey, how's it going? How are you? You won the main APH championship this past season back in April. Great job. I did. Um, Pulled I very well then. Yeah. Struggling today a little bit. Just struggling. Just so just pretend you're there at the APH finals. I know. I need to slow my pace down. Just slow down and get on that head pin. Well, you hit about 50,000 nine pin hits that day. What's going well, on today? I did, well, <laughs> I haven't hit that many today. I wish I had, but not today. But I'm going to keep trying, keep shooting it. When in doubt, close your eyes. Wow. Well, you know what to say. Pick up the next ball, Paul Green special. <laughs> oh, what a shot for Chestakov. Oh, fire it up. On his spare. Thanks, Mr. Mike Jakes, Mr. Ninepin from Stars and Strikes, South Paris, Maine. Strike on spare Chestakov. So 57 through 5, 67 plus 2 through 6. Tom Pelkey now. Third ball, I believe. 66 half, going for a 10. And he gets two for a 9. 75 through 6 in the first of three. From Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, at the men's 2023 <laughs> ICC World Championship. Day one of five. Close one here, 262, 255. The Hatchman lead by seven. The mark situation, two apiece. Yes, I knew that camera compromise was going to go over well. Right, so us. happy everyone gets to see it, even if we didn't get to feature exactly who we wanted to, but we could see it all. Again, that's Lucky Strike and Avon Valley to our left, and Lucky Strike Orange, Avon Valley Maroon. And Bowling Belt, All Mafia. Oh, heaven help me. Both on spares, nearly 7, 1, 2, 10, 50 through 4. Toss Douglas, strike, double strike, wow! It's all fired up. 58 plus bonus balls through five. You know, would you believe that's actually the first double we've seen on our featured pair of lanes? Pelkey, uh, ideally rather, almost. Scott didn't realize he was on a double, or the captain, on a strike rather. The captain Pelkey, can't believe it didn't go. Nearly a nine, 59 and a half. The Hatchman on the move. <laughs> Well, I'm now, now I'm sure he's fully aware. He knows how big this one can be. It's always. Um, and they got the green light special, a double strike. Calvin, I'm sorry to do a dirty to you, but you, you know the importance of a, the ball following the double strike. That's where it really counts. Nearly perfect shot, spread eagle. Two, four, seven left on the right, three, six, ten. Now Scott knows this time he's on double strike. Yeah. Well, you, th you throw your high 206, I'll, I'll make fun of you a little bit maybe. He's going for the turkey on lane 13. Yes, that's right. He rolled 206 yesterday. Just missed the pocket. No backdoor action. 26 in that first double strike box. 64 uh, overall. Those new to my notation. I update every strike after this. So it's six on this one. And then one more strike. Yeah, good second ball by Neely. Uh-oh. Right. Six in the double, second double strike box, so a 70 half. 
the power of the double strike. That's right. So a dozen pins, basically. It's not super big compared to what a you know strike bill would be, but but it gave his team a 23 pin lead with one spare for each side. Neely mm -hmm. Jr. in eight, 67 through six, and Scott Douglas grabs an eight. The match. 78 through six in the first of three. 302, 279. I believe that's the biggest lead so far this side, Greg. 23 for the hatch and then one spare apiece. Uh, yeah, <coughs> that, that lead's growing for sure. Dan Castle will call the second string. I'll be back to call the third and final string for the day. And back at it tomorrow morning, every morning till Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. Local time, Atlantic time, 8 o'clock East Coast time. Today, Tuesday through Saturday. Mike Jakes, a banana split. He had 35 coming in through four. Tim Douglas, 42 through four. He's on the head, head pin, nine. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, watch out. Careful, you got confident in that mic there. <laughs> That's how you strategically cough. I don't have the, like, the red button that'll drop it for you. Douglas Ooh. missed it. I got scared by that wood. It was angled badly. You'd have to play it way on the right side, almost like it's not there. And Jake's Ooh. a seven, 42 half. Douglas, the Paul Grant special, missed the second, make the third to 10, 52 half. The Hatchman in the lead. Lots and lots of time left here in the first string. The lead is 26, 312, 286 still, one spare for each side. Gary, hello from Tennessee, hello to you. I. Uh, nice to see you. The as first always. gentleman to have a wow shirt delivered. We could ship anywhere in the United States and Canada for a shipping ship. Hello shipping from Tennessee. Price. Be careful, Paul. I, I, we try to tell him. We are. I've been serving my voice, taking some strings <laughs> off. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're realizing the importance of self care, you know? Though I might hit up Kegler's Bar later here at Fair Lanes. I did uh, get about seven hours sleep for the first time. I think I got more sleep last night. I did the last three days combined. Yeah. So, yeah. There was pizza yesterday, the ham and cheese today. Delicious. Of course, a poutine food truck came by the alley uh, separately, I believe. But Mike Jakes on the head pin for we a spare. It. We got it. On the board, 52 and a ball through six. Douglas missed everything. One, two, seven, ten. Uh-oh. He's been pinning very well. Only lost one so far. Starts and strikes now have two marks to one advantage. Douglas gets an eight. Okay. 60 through six. At the minimum, but Tim Douglas, the guy that can throw a, a 100 game and come back and throw a 160 at you. Kevin McNally on the right, Chris Winniars on the left. It's a 24 pin lead for the Hatcheman, down a mark. Chris 51 through four, Kevin McNally 40 through four. Just straight tens. The men's state team record he broke at the time, 21-55. Pretty good score for a team. And look at this lead. Three quarter picket fence, seven, eight, ten. Winnie yards, one, three, seven. The wood angled behind the one, three, towards that's, the seven. Yeah, it's gonna challenge uh, Kevin's pending streak there. He's got wood available on the left side to at least try and send something, but I don't know how in the world he's gonna cover two of those from any angle. Right wood's not any good at all, so gotta try. Somehow the 10 goes, the 7 does not. How many times did you see that in Kenneth and Bowling? You know, I had a feeling the 7 was just there was just too much in the way there. He did very well to make that 8-10. <coughs> arch for a spare. Oh, got the kick off the wall, but not the right way he wanted to go. Yeah, propeller wasn't moving quick enough either. Maybe could have skidded across the lane more. These pin plates move, but not Mc infinitely. McNally, 9, 49 half. Ah. Winnie Ars on the head on the object pin as usual, 10, 61 half. His team is up 330, 305, so 25, down one mark. He's on his split. Where am I going? There's the score. Chris Winnie Ars, high single 188, high triple 449, high five 705. He's 32 years young. Home lanes of Lakeside Lanes, Manchester Hampshire Hall of Famer, Tim Lipke's house. McNally pounds the strike zone. Yeah, six tipped into three, nice. And 7 2 1 split. He's got the 8 pin for a spare. When he has four horses left. 1 2 4 7. Chris Bowen since he's five years old. 
been on TV a few times. Past. A couple appearances on Candle Pins for Kid, two time runner up. One on one in classic Candle Pins and one on one in New England Candle Pins. <laughs> on the board, yes. So he gets a spare, 59 of all through six. Sorry, Hawk Harrelson. I've seen Hawk Harrelson. You can put it on the board. Yes. That happened a few times on the Comcast show. I think it was when Steve Vadney was bowling, and for some reason they were mimicking the Chicago White Sox call. I have no idea why, but it's. Well, he used to be an announcer, and he also played for the Red Sox a long time ago. Yes. When he gets a nine, he's at 70 through six in the first of three strings. Four blocks to go. Now it's three marks to one for Stars and Strikes to down 24. And they could cut it mm -hmm. as low as the single digits on the fills. You betcha. Overall in the match, it's uh, 10 marks to technically, uh, it's more so nine for Hatcheman since uh, Scotty Douglas doubled. Uh, pinning is six in favor of Hatchetman right now. So this 24 pin gap is expected to close up a bit. Let's see how by how much. 24 lane facility, Fair Lanes, Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. ICC World's Men's Tournament on Canopin Bowling Network. Keith Beaupre, seven at first ball. Scott Royce is on a spare, and he only got one. Well, brutal. Wasn't a lemon drop, though. Before a six in your first ball, one dollar optional donation to Kevin Prince for Cancer. A bowl is 5 1 C3 charity. Yeah, I got to tell you about that in a sec after this box. 63 Some through six. Sure. Keith cannot convert for the spare. Uh, Calvin Locke uh, dropped the first uh, lemon drop loony in the bin. Yeah, you got the first Canadian one. You and put the dollar in, actually? Yeah. You, d you were in a way, in, you were in the booth at the time, but he came up to and proudly announced it. I forget when it was. It was, I think, first match of the day. Oh, wow. You must be running a fever. <laughs> <laughs> Good out for Scott Royce. He gets a uh, nine. Yep. Keith Beaupre, 10. 64, six, well, 64 for Beaupre, 72 for Royce. Ah, uh, the situation you hate, Paul. It's an 11 box and a nine box. 74, 72, make it. Uh, what was that, uh, Greg? It's that situation you hate the 11 box and the 9 box. Spare 1 9. Oh, yeah. We've helped close to seven families, six officially in the lemon drop pool in just over a year, and 13 on the wow shirts along. There's a strike for the tsunami. Destroyed the pins. 84 plus 2 through 8. Scott gets 4 in that first ball. Now the mark's even, 2 apiece. Hatchman have the lead. Yeah, thanks to Fairlanes for letting us put a table out there. We got a still a fair deal of inventory between shirts, hats, and uh, calendars that we're doing for the bowlers. Swice gave it around, at least with a three pin. Trying to get to 82 through eight. And Scott gets the 10, 82 through eight, it is. Hatchman had the lead by 24 pins. The marks are even, two apiece. Dave Chestikov on the right for the Hatchman. On the left, Tom Pelkey, the stars and strikes. <laughs> yeah, Bill, that's right. That mark indicator is relatively new, only a few Friday night Pro League matches ago. Uh, yeah, the yellow blotches just tell you which bowlers are on a mark. So first and second for Hatchman, including Dave Chestikov, are on marks, for example. Right down the middle, a spread eagle. It's working on a strike on lane 14. Tough one. Oh, Tom Pelk is at 75 through 6. Coming in, not on a mark. And he goes right, that's the 1, 2, 7, 10. Chestikov grabs 3 the unconventional way, 3, 6 right, 2 left. Got it on the strike. Pelkey missed inside, has the 1 and 10. Tom has state titles under his belt, singles, doubles, and mixed doubles. Comes a bowling family. 112 current average, 128 its best season ending average. <coughs> Tesco going over the short two, does for a nine. 83 through seven. Pelkey field goal, eight, 83 through seven. Follow the Friday Night Pro League Game of the Week on Candle Pin Bowling Network every Friday night for the regular bowls, bowling season, then the playoffs to follow after that. We'll see Rich Lamoni, Central 2, hosting Dave Barber's Extra Lanes, November 17th, 7.30 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook, Candle Pin Bowling Network.
Watch the rebroadcast on YouTube. Chestico, parallel pins, one, two in front, now no, two go. The back row goes, now it's the one, three. Pelkey, four down, six to go. Rolling was slightly off to the left for Chester Cove. That's why he stopped. Or it might be the bowler on his right. Is that Ryan Southall? Yes, he's, he's all fired up. <laughs> of course he, he is. He's excited to be here. Yeah. Chester Cove's rippled the curtain here. Belke, 3-6. Good pit there. Mark Richards done one as the bowl is like Keith Beaupre, Ryan Southall, a whole bunch of others. Chestico picks it up. 10. 10 bucks. 93 through 8. And Pelkey missed for an 8. He's at 91 through 8. Hatchman have the lead by 34 right now. They're down two marks to one. Mm, yeah, pinning's starting to tilt a bit, 10. Hatchman's pinning is uh, 10 in their favor right now. Rush Neary Jr., 67. Scott Douglas, 78 through 6. Had an unrealized double strike early in the string. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yep. <laughs> Something dropped back there? Yeah, I knocked my papers over the, over the wall. Neely for strike nine. Scott Douglas looking at the three and the five. Miss left. Mm. Neely right on it, spare. 77 the ball through seven, seven's a while. Scott gets the 10, 88 through seven. Russ bowled as a kid. For five to six years before graduating high school in 1987, started bowling again seven years ago in 2016. Won the military for five years as a Navy Fire Control Chief. His heroes are Russ's fa senior, his father in the Hall of Fame, his brother Nate Neely. He won a Maine State three person tournament with his wife Jody and Mark Hollywood Smith. And his father has the official main state record of 10 strings, 14.85. Back to live action. Douglas pounds the strike zone, but a 2 1 split. Not anymore. It's a 1 1 split. 2 in the 10. Neely on the bonus, trying to go back row. Only 4. 81 through 7. Scott, 88 through 7 coming in. 30 pin lead right now for the Hatchetman. Down one mark. Douglas won't go. Ooh. Neely, good bid, coming back, but rolls away. 3 6 10. Now Scotty's got the ball on the pin plate. Scott Bowen, since he was 18 months old. His brother Tim got him involved. He does some 10 pin bowling. Big fan of Craig Holbrook and Bob Wickham, both Camp and Hall of Famers. Bob winning in 2023. And Greg, we do some editing pretty soon on the Camp and Hall of Fame ceremony, Greg. So that's a lot of work. Yeah, Thanks so for I am. doing that. Well, I got a sickness a fortnight before I came here. I'm still sort of feeling it, although I'm not, I'm not going to be contagious at this point, thank goodness. But it's just so annoying. It knocked me completely out of commission. Otherwise, I was hoping to get it done by now. But rest assured, we got the speeches in the can, and we can't wait to show them to you. Many thanks to uh, ICBA staff, uh, Ralph Sem, Maria Angelotti, Maria Angelotti, I hate to clarify. Thanks so much for letting us cover that prestigious event. Well, I gave this suggestion to Ralph Sem, he thought it would be good, good for the sport. I thought it was a, a great night for Kenneth and Bowling. Scott Douglas gets a nine, 97 through eight. Russ Neely Jr. matches the nine. 90 through 8. Lead is 30 still for the Hatchman. Down 2 to 1 in marks. 
And the final two balls for Star and Strikes. Stars and Strikes are all marks. Remember, two match, points for, remember two match points per string and two for total. Eight match points per match. And one point if they tie. No overtime, obviously, to the, if the case. Not now we don't. To the playoffs. Now, would that be something? Triangle for Douglas, 2 4 5. Jake in the bonus. Good ball, 8 4 7. Spare chance at the minimum, 60 to 6. As Tim Douglas is. Cuts lead to 22. Now, one mark for each side. Oh, yep, that's nice. Tornado. Spare. 70 a ball through 7 in the first of three from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Jakes, doinks mm. it. Well, it's not covering. And picks up for a 10, 71 through seven. So now it's two marks to one for the Hatcherman, up 21. Yeah, it's 11 marks to basically 11 since Scott doubled. Uh, pinning is eight in Hatcherman's favor. Reason is probably a lot bigger right now. I hate to say it, I'm afraid uh, Scott Sorois is averaging two on his spare fills. That's part of it, I'm afraid. Jake's 2 8 half push to 7 10 post. Douglas fill is six on the spare. 76 to 7. They're up 27 in the string. Oh, didn't pick up. Three and six, not the spare fills Tim Douglas was after either, to be fair. Oh, what a split conversion that is. Sometimes you can't make the easy ones. Two, seven, eight, ten with Wood. 81 the ball through eight. The main state champion, Mike Jakes. Douglas, object pinned, one for nine. 85 to 8 in the first of three. Nico, a great fan of bowling, is in the chat here. Always one of the nicest guys to correspond with. He points out that there is the league secretary link. Uh, we're trying to circulate in the chat comments. It's tough to sometimes, but if you find that link, you could click it and get the standings for the day. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, worst case, you could also go to leaguesecretary.com um, and you can find Fairlanes, Moncton, New Brunswick. Fairlanes, Moncton, New Brunswick, and try to locate the results that way. We're sorry it's not completely accessible, but we also posted a link, I believe, to Candlepin Bowling on Candlepin Bowling Network Facebook. You can find the link there. Chris drops nine, two pin for a spare. Kept McNally in the bonus, a half Worcester. Brutal, a momentum killer. The fill is two, 71. Make that 61 through six. Here go the fingers. One spare for each side, Hatchman up 24. 20 yards, got it. Very accurate, spare. They need a ball through seven. <laughs> McNally wraps around the one seven. Yeah, good sticks though, that'll save the box at least. One more, one more and nine will be fine. The whole banners here, looks like the old Boston Garden. Tons of youth championships. Adult tournaments, obviously, a lot of house. And how about the other here. aspect, the people on top of you, basically? Your teammates, of course, but still. Most of the balls stand up all week. As McNally gets a nine, 70 through seven at the minimum. Hatchman have two marks to one advantage. You're up 25 in the string. They've led most of the way. And Stars and Strikes looking for the first two points today. Not to clear that wood on lane 14. Fourteen will re-rack. Yep. Thank you for taking time out all week long to watch Canada for Bowling Network presentation of the 2023 ICC Men's World Team Championships. Get the word out to your friends, have them share it, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell button on Facebook, get notified when we go live. Never miss a box. Back to live action. Chris Winniars, all world. Pin it there, he gets four. 84 through seven on the fill. Hey, that's Dave Chesterco's favorite. Save that one for him. McNally up, had pin for a strike almost. Seven pin left up. 
Hatchman up 29. One mark for each side. You can see the marks above between the total and gain, but under the names, the yellow marker means what bowler has the spare or strike or double strike when he has in the hole. McNally picks it up, spare. 18 a ball through eight. Two marks to one in their favor now. Trying to get the first two points. Nice, Alva Craig. That's a tough Paul Grant special. Mm. Missed the second, make the third. But 94 through eight. But it's pretty when it goes. You see why he likes it? We like that leaf. Anyway, you see it here. The, there you see the two marks to one now more clearly on your screen. Back to the top here. Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Gouillard, and Candle Pin Bowling Network. <laughs> two boxes to go for each bowler. 29 pin lead for the Hatchman, down two marks to one. Scott Sorois on the right for Stars and Strikes. The tsunami, Keith Bopar and a strike for the Hatchman on the red shirt on the left. Sorois off to the left, then hit. Only four. Beaupre on a strike. Takes down six. One, two, seven, eight. Beaupre seems a little unluckier here. Scott Sorois, on the other hand, this seems to be Wood covering a lot. Just slam the head pin back, maybe. Sorois mm. just missed the pocket. One, eight, nine. Keith Sorois threw a triple strike earlier today. Oh, good shot. Seven won't go. It sticks on that strike, though. Nine to fill. 93 through eight. Biggest lead now for them, 38. They're down two marks to none. Sorois, object pin, one for an eight, 90 through nine. And Beaupre gets a 10 box, 103 through nine. 40 pin lead for the Hatcherman, down two marks, but not a comfortable lead necessarily, but a decent lead. Pretty certain for that string. Yep. <laughs> Lemon drop. We, 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 ex we exchange. We know, Paul. We know. <laughs> I was giving him $5 off for the raffle. I didn't see it. They're all, they're all waving to me. <laughs> well, they're, they're making it rain. That's what. Oh, it's a good spare. Good bounce back for Soroy's. It won't go. No reprieve. He makes a spare. One dollar for the four six pin your first shot optional donation to Candle Pins for Cancer, a bolus 501c3 charity. A fun way to help a great cause. We mentioned Candle Pins for Cancer, a 501c3 charity. They'll take an eight, 111 first string. We mentioned it more on the broadcast, but Keith's a great supporter of the charity. Yes, he is. He has 100 a ball. He's lost multiple members of family to cancer, so it's near and dear to his heart. Yeah. Until you know someone that goes through it, you don't always appreciate it. Yeah. Now, I've known this for some time, but uh, Venmo has been our primary uh, way of transacting payments, yep. but that's not Canadian friendly, of course, so. No. We take checks here in Canada also. Beautiful shot, a little full, but he gets seven. Six make it. What? Got the head pin, got the count. 106 first string for Scott Sorois for Stars and Strikes. Eight box to go. It's a 32 pin lead for the Hatchman, down two marks to none. A two, one, one apiece now, right, for the marks? Uh, nope. It's two up uh, for Jakes and McNally. That's right. Okay, that's right. Two, two to nine. Yep. So they still have time. They can get it in the teens, potentially. Dan Cass will do play-by-play -play in the second string. I'll be back with the third and final string of the day. Dave Chestikov, 93, Tom Pelkey, 91 through eight. Starts and strikes, trying to pull, pull off their first win of the day. 0-16 coming in. Back at it tomorrow morning, every morning through Saturday, 8 a.m. Eastern time, 9 o'clock local time, Atlantic time, on Ken Huffman Bowling Network. Oh. There's a strike for Chestikov. Just like the good old days. 103 plus two in the ninth. I told me he had to get a 132 today because he has a 132 high average for one season. Ah, Pooh, he's doing just fine. He'll get a 120 game easy. Depend a good count, I suppose. Oh, what a try. Just missed a 10. Ooh. Uh, 
All right. Ball, why are we wrestling the mic? I got to get a count on this one. Belkey got a nine box for 100. All right, it's 1029. Leads 33 play Hatchman. Belkey needs a mark to help out. Pushes back to Julian Strike with a head pinch last to fall from the back door. Made famous here in the 80s by Dave Julian. Did it all the time, so the name stuck to Julian. He'll take it. 110 plus two in the 10th. Dave's on a strike, looking at that wood, 7, 9, 10. The left piece is forward, the right ones are forming a V right around the nine pin. Uh, I guess right cap, hope the rotation hits the seven and then lands into the left piece of wood. Takes the nine and 10. They had a telestrator in some of the Canadian shows. Wish we had one of those. Diagrammed it nice and easy. Ooh, oh, if, you get more and more, if you get more and more viewers, and that can help out the monetization. Watch the commercials on YouTube, too. It helps out. And the money goes back to the equipment. Yeah. No spare for Chester Cove. Thank you. Keith Beaupre in the bucket, Keith, in the bucket. He's putting he's putting $6, $2 in. I want my $2. Chester Cove, nice shot, 10. Nice string, 122. on a strike. No, 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 no. On the bonus, Pelkey seven. First ball on the strike. Try and get to 120. Cut it into the 30s. Fine stream by Dave Chestico, 122. He'll take nine in the strike. Nice string, 119 for Tom Pelkey. Now in Florida, coming up for the Worlds here in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Down 33, though, stars and strikes. We have two marks. Mm -hmm. So they can get into the teens. They need a few more to get going to get the two points. <laughs> Scott Douglas on the left, Russ Neely Jr. on the right. One, two, seven, ten for Russ Neely Jr. 90 coming in. Scott Douglas, 97. Douglas for his third strike, almost. Oh, you're oh, a wiggle lob on the king, the five. He had a double strike earlier, didn't even know it. You were hit. Get over. Neely, what a shot for a spare. How about that one? Wow. 100 in the ball in the ninth. Douglas missed it. It's three marks to none for stars and strikes. Yeah, they need some help, but uh, putting a strike on one of those marks could easily be that. And Douglas gets the 10 on the Paul Grant special. Missed the second, make the third. Is there ever a good time for that, Fred? <laughs> Never. 107 through 9. Made a living off that. Missed it by just a little speck and making the third shot. <laughs> Neely in the bonus. Crossing over 6-7. Left to right, 2, 5, 10 on the spare. 107 through 9, leads down to 26. They got two more hits left. Douglas just three. Momentum on stars on the strike side. Can they ride the tide and get their first two points? For another one. Oh, what a try, the object. Douglas, beautiful shot. Won't get to the seven. He gets an eight. 115, opening string for Russ Neely Jr. The owner, co-owner with his wife, Jody Neely, starts and strikes. 14 lane facility in South Paris, Maine. Scott gains two with a 10. He has a 117 first string. Yeah, pinning tilting 13 in favor of Hatchinman. That explains half the lead. So we have four boxes to go. It's 28 pin lead for the Hatchman, still down two marks to none. The average sphere is 6.5, 8.3 for strike fills. Stats by yeah. Ken from Bowling Network. Actually, considering Stars and Strikes has a couple of marks in the hand, you were, everything you said was correct. Considering Stars and Strikes has a few marks in the hand, the 13 pin gap might almost explain the entire lead for the Hatchman, in fact. 
That's just a third ball pinning. Mike Jakes, a big bonus ball. Only four. 85 through eight, leads 24 for the Hatcherman. Douglas strike. Little tornado, tornado touches down on lane 13. 95 plus two through nine. Jakes, tough leave. Four, seven, nine, ten. Looking like the first two points are gonna go to the Hatcherman, who are 12 and four coming in. Stars and strikes, 0 and 16. Stars and strikes, battle all string long, but coming up short. <laughs> Jakes with the wood, missed everything. This high single, 178, high triple, 427, high five, 674. From Peru, Maine, originally Runford, Maine, 114 league ball to 117, his best average. Scott uh, Chin Douglas now on a strike. Mike Jakes 91 through 9. 28 pin lead for the Hatchman. One mark for each side. Jakes on the nose, 3 2 split. Douglas, perfect shot. Spread eagle plus the 8. First ball on the strike. Stars and strikes more than likely need a double to win the strength. Tim normally with a very cheery disposition, very frustrated by that. Yep. <laughs> Biggest of competitions, it's a grind, but every mm -hmm. box they feel it. <laughs> Douglas, good big, got four of the seven. Seven in the strike, 102 through nine. More importantly, teams up 35. Jake's a seven, 98 opening string. Douglas gains Kevin McNally on lane 14 here at Moncton, the 2023 Men's ICC World Championships on Candleton Bowling Network. Yeah. Uh, uh, where were you? Where did you all go, people? I'm so sorry. We're reconnected now. All right, spread eagle plus the eight. Come back, please, we haven't perished. When he has three, two split. So the Hatchman take the first two points. They climb to 14 and four. And Stars and Strikes will drop to 0 and 18. McNally, good bid, try to go three into four, got the three, not the four. It's amazing the mischief one simple cable will do. Pins out well on the right side. Oh, Bowler's aiming at the left side to pin this out. McNally chops out one for a seven, 90 through nine. Hmm. When he has 10, 104 through nine. Final box, Dan Castle with the play by play. In the second string, I'll be back for the third and final string. Yeah, it's a few splits when he has is pinned out now for 10, very solid. Probably a big part of the reason Hatcherman has gained, oh my, 23 pins and pinning alone. Pin, 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 the marks will follow. Kevin McNally, four husband plus the eight. And I'll go around while Dan's doing the play by play. I'll get scores from all the other teams. And we'll post the uh, standings on Candlepin Chat after we're all done when we get to those copies. Winning has eight and 10. McNally missed right, one, three, eight. Chris Winnie has eight and 10 with wood to possibly help, not gonna be easy. Winding up here in the first of three strings, the third of three shifts today. Don't forget nine o'clock local time, Atlantic time, eight o'clock East Coast time every day through Saturday. Winnie has just behind the 10. Put the playoffs <laughs> on Canada Bowling Network. McNally, nine, disappointing, 99 opening string. Chris Winniards closed out the first. Again, accurate shooter, 10. 114 opening string. 
Greg, give us an update of the standings, uh, the points rather, and the marks, and we'll give it back to Dan Castle for a moment. Uh, no more marks on the board. Uh, 576 to 539, if I haven't yanked the cable out. Uh, is this one, boink. Um, and we saw uh, 16 marks to effectively 14 for Stars and Strikes, but uh, hitting till today of 24 in their favor, and then uh, marks took the rest, basically. So even though the bonus ball is still. Yeah. Coming up, Dan, I'll reset the scoreboard for you, and we'll get set now for string number two. Two more match points starting fresh here, and 39 pins absolutely surmountable for Stars and Strikes. No intermissions here. We'll get started in just a second. See Keith Beaufre and Scott Soroy's up. And your levels are up uh, anytime. Okay, hello, a um, little too high. Um, Dan Castle back again. And uh, in the intermission, well, for me anyway, while I, uh, <laughs> Paul was on the line, I'm wandering around talking to the bowlers, checking out what's going on. It's great conversations with Craig Holbrook and some other bowlers here. And uh, one of the interesting outcomes was the Perry All-Stars versus Kingswood match. Perry All-Stars being from Ryan's Family Amusement, so I know all the guys there. And uh, they had a com very competitive match and it ended up going to Kingswood, 619 to 618. A one pin squeaker coming from behind win for Kingswood. So congratulations to them and um, Hard luck for our friends at the uh, Harry's All-Stars team. And uh, looks like we're ready to go into game two with the Hatchet Men versus the Stars and Strikes team in blue, our Hatchet Men in red. And Keith Beaupre just uh, was up momentarily. And uh, Saroy's. Have his, um, Scott Saroy, or Saroy. Saroy, is right, yep. Is it uh, silent S? That's right. Uh, no, nope, okay, well, they just started with the spares for both of them, or in the first, and they're done. So we'll just continue with Dave Chester Cove and Tom Pelkey. Dave Chester Cove is um, one of the people involved in a program we have in Massachusetts and called the New England Candle Pins which is a, a comeback, and they just taped their uh, show recently. So looking forward to seeing that. It's a, essentially a ladder match with seven single elimination match with 16 qualifiers, and Chester Cove introduces himself to game two with a strike. Helke yeah. off on the three pin. Drops six. Seven. Yep, one, seven, nine. And he's off on the wood to the left and just takes out the nine. See if he can pick up the one, seven, and he just gets a head pin. So head pin's the last of all, but it fell anyway. The seven pin did not. All right, box two. Chester goes on a strike on the right. Elke with a nine box. Chester Cove carefully lining up his shot. He's in there again on a head pin and a little full. Drops six to start. Pelkey, half Worcester left, off on the three pin, just punches out the three and the eight. Chester Cove is on his second ball for the fill, hoping to cut that three pin over to take out the seven. And he's wide to the right, just takes the 10, so it'll be seven in the strike. Pelkey tries to cut on the inside of that half Worcester and uh, unfortunately misses everything. So just a half Worcester, just nothing on that ball. And uh, Chester Cove with an eight box. Pelkey looking to get some pins here. He goes to the three pin, 
and uh, ends up with a disappointing six box. All right, our third bowlers are calling up, coming up. And uh, for the Stars and Strikes team is Russ Neely. And for the Hatchet Men, it's Scott Douglas. Scotty starts out with a solid ball and takes out nine. Neely, he's off on the two pin and drops four. He's got a, uh, Scotty's got a wiggly two pin, I th or three pin, I think. It's not the head pin unless it's way off mark. Is there something hiding behind there too? All right, so he's in an eight drop, he did. Yeah, there's a nine pin dropping, but it's gone. He picks it up nice and clean. Well, off the wall anyway. It went. Nicely done, that's tough. Neely picked up a few more, he's got three to go. And makes a 10 box, 10s are good. So Scott Douglas, he had a double strike in the last match that I saw, I don't know about the rest of it. But I did see that. That's all there was to it for Scott Douglas. But that's a quick way to get yourself a 117. That and good pinning. Only left four on the plate. So there's Scott Douglas. Carrying a 112 average right now. And uh, he just puts or four in a fill. And uh, Neely, unfortunately, punched out a spread eagle. Douglas to the right. Neely trying to spare this, just picks off the two pin. Now that was very close. If you see where that pin ended up, it's Parway, Scott Douglas's pin, it poked Parway into the channel of lane 13. Now it's out of play anyway, so I think we're gonna play on here, but. We actually had a moment earlier where it caused a pin uh, lane reset because of outside interference. Of well, I think Neely would have wanted a reset on that one with a spread eagle. Mm. Where's that mulligan rule? And uh, so, like we were saying before, that worked against me the other day when the automatic re uh, score in, in uh, Millis caught. I had a beautiful nine drop, nine pin wiggling, scooted, stayed upright, but slid to the back, was hanging just Barely behind, uh, about, uh, ahead of the pit. And the uh, scorer read it as a strike and the sweep came down and I had to box, pull the box over again. And I didn't get as good of a leave next time. That would've been an easy spare. Very disappointing. Timmy Douglas, Scott's brother. On the right. Whoa! And there's a strike for Douglas. I've covered a lot of his matches with ACST. Mike Jake from Maine. In fact, that's a Maine team that we're working with. He just took out yeah. four or five. Yeah, that's not a silent S either, Jake's. That's not terribly bad. He was on the head pin. Just missed the object. Take, took out two more. And a nine box. Mike Jake. Tim Douglas from Marshfield, Massachusetts has a 120 average. 194 single is his high that he did at the 2022 Worlds. Bowling, he's a young man, been bowling since he was just little. Tim on the first fill and a strike ball, puts on six, seven. First ball for Mike Jake is off to the three pin and he takes, leaves the four horsemen left and the 10 pin. Douglas looking at the one, six, 10 and just gets the head pin. <coughs> Jake hoping to get a mark here to catch up with Tim. And he does. No, no, he doesn't. It doesn't go. Yes, inside. he does. It does go. So it looked like the pin was gone and then Tim stepped in front of my view and and I looked again and it was falling. So Tim with a nine box. 
after, after a nine fill, I think it was. Eight fill. Eight fill, nine box. Thank you. And that's correct. Jake's on a mark. When he gets up next. All right, Chris Winiers in. Winiers in. Next. You see a lot of all of these guys in Massachusetts in the bowling circles. And Kevin McNally. Kevin McNally from Newport, Maine. Chris. First ball on the head pin. And a nine drop with the four pin standing. Chris from Manchester, New Hampshire. McNally's first ball leaves the seven, eight, ten, and a big cluster of wood in the middle that may give him a shot at this. Oh, Winnie, no. Winniars misses a mark. Oh, that's a copy score hangman. Everyone else had a spare in that box. Sorry, Chris. That's a blitz box. He gets blitzed. Let's see what he can do with this. And look at that. He got the seven, eight, ten. He played the right wood. I, I think he wanted to play in the middle and it got away from him. And there's a 10 box for Chris Winniars. Well, we just threw a lot of jargon out there not all our viewers might be familiar with. So a blitz box, first of all? Yeah, yeah. that's what we call it in league. Uh, with, some, with one of my old teams. So some, some other teams may not have done this. But that was would be when everybody on your team had a mark but you in a box. Then you got blitzed. And we used to have to pay into a tin can for things like that. Oh, that made, so it must have made like an audible clank every time you pay it too. <laughs> um, yeah, we also had to pay a quarter every time we missed a single pin, things like that. And then we split the kitty at the end of the year. <laughs> kind of hoping we didn't have a lot of money in it, but it also conditioned you because we all hated giving quarters up. Yeah. So Winnie has dropped eight on his first ball, and uh, McNally puts five on the fill. Yep, and 50. McNally's looking at a, what we call the Kaliri. Winnie is trying to pick up that split and puts a good bid on it. Doesn't go. McNally oh, no. trying to pick up the Kaliri and leaves the four horsemen component. Just took took out the eight pin. Another quarter in the can. If 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 Chris were to miss this, then it would have been a quarter on our team. Anytime you miss a single pin. So a maximum expenditure of 50 cents per box. We got really good at shooting single pins as a result. Nine boxes for both bowlers. There we go. I'll put that on. Yep. I'm a little quiet, I think. Blitz box cost us a dollar. Let's do that. First the scoreboard. There we go. Nope. That's not good. There we go. <laughs> Good start for Saroy's here, leading the pack. Mike Jake's also. Ackerman steadily right, we climbing along. Swap well, though. places. Keith Beaupre on the left, and uh, Saroy's on the right. Oh. Saroy's drops three with a hit on the four pin. Oh, Beaupre no. on the head pin, but little light and uh, oh excuse me sir was on a spare there we go okay spare. thank you I was looking for names and not looking at the score sheet no so. that's a, that's my nope I didn't have the smudge up that's my on me so he took out everything but the one two ten and Beaupre looking for a great spare there it doesn't go for him he's on his object pin correctly but it doesn't work and Soroy makes a nine out of that Beaupre be curious to see what he does. Does he go for it or does he just pick up two? He took the two, tried to carry that off the wall. Great bid to, for the 10, but he ends up with a nine. Keith Ropey throws one of the fastest balls in the game, at least in New England. Brutal competitor. Ooh, that tipped back for Soroy's. Soroy's dropped nine. Bopre on the head pin that time. Spread eagle minus the four, uh, three pin. In the meantime, Roy Scott Royce just looking at the ten pin to pick up. Three out of four. Yes. All over it. Nice, nice clean ball, right, left to right split. Bopre, right, right where he was wanted to be. 
Didn't carry. That, one of the perks of bowling on camera. We're seeing the robbery. Don't worry. Whoa, look at that. Is that going? No, nope. right in front of it, short wood. So short wood, we call it when it rolls in front of a pin. The pin, or the pin was uh, the sh was too short to catch it yeah. out. So it, might, it must have been a defective pin. Short wood, short pin. Yep, short pin. We say it's just a course. All right, we're coming into the next round. Box three for Pelkey and Chester Cove. Tom Pelkey, first ball. It's a lemon drop. Lemon drop right, just the six pin. Dave Chester Cove started out with a strike in, in uh, box one. And uh, this time he's left with the 1 2 10 split. And uh, Pelkey almost spares that. He's got a piece of wood rolling over there, not fast enough, not going to take it out. Chester Cove looking to cut that head pin over to the 10 or bounce the ball off the head pin. He opts for the inside and, and uh, misses that. Pelkey looking to pick up the seven for a 10 box. All over it. And Chester Cove ends up with a nine box. Yep. Two pin doesn't want to play, stays up. There it goes, actually it's down, 10 box. Ah. He's waited on that button because he had a feeling. You could see it was leaning, it was leaning. So. Any bowler will tell you, no time limit. There's no pitch clock in candle pin bowling as of this date. All right, so Pelkey, Tom Pelkey on the right. For the Stars and Strikes team. And he's off the head pin, onto the four. Looks like he dropped three, maybe four. Chester Cove on a head pin in the right hand pocket. His ball was drifting left to right, I think. And uh, sometimes a head pin punishes you, you know? Because he's left with a 4 10 split and some ugly looking wood, so Pelkey on a spare attempt. Off the object, picks up a few more. I don't think that wood could be in much worse position. He's got to get around that and just tap it over. For DC, you're saying? Well, yeah. No, if you look at Chester Cove's lead, yeah. he's got a 4-10 split. The wood's, yeah. the red so the, the wood's in front of the pin, and if he hits that, it's going to deflect the ball. He's got to get to the pin behind that. Just tap it like 10. that. Just like that, which he did. Didn't work. Curses. I hit that perfectly. He did. I thought I thought he hit it about as good as you could. And an eight box for Pelkey. But that's the game, you know. If the, those shots were easy, we'd call it 10 pin. Speaking of. And there's a nine box. But because it's not 10-pin, the 10-pin isn't easy. All right, we're going back up to the third bowlers in our group. Scott Douglas for the Hatchetman on the left. And Russ Neely Jr. Hang on, I, I needed to stand up for a second. Russ Neely Jr., you're correct. Of course you're correct, you know this. Russ Neely. We know this. Oh, he's got a late. No, it's not going to go. Scotty Douglas. Uh-oh. Gets a castle. You buzz the head pin, three pin tips, and that wood is good for nothing. And there it is again. The same pattern we frequently see, two pieces of wood. One here is maybe helpful. Probably not, just a tease. So Neely, nope, his doesn't go. Bad wood, unlucky. See if Scott can pull this off. And no, Ooh, five pins. It was wiggling. It Goodness. is. And nearly a 10 box, but that five pin isn't going to fall until he hits it. Backsplash which is he did right now. So 10 box for both bowlers. Yeah, backsplash has happened here in Moncton. That's how we saw the castle go last. We're still workshopping names for that. I love Castle. I'll use it for sure. But anyone else have any name for that? Because that leap happens so often. You know, I, I'm, I'm okay with that name. 
Yeah, me. So um, Neely dropped seven on his first ball. Scott's off in the ocean a little bit onto the four pin, but it's a pretty decent leave for the result of one two ten or one three ten and some interesting wood onto the triangle spare Ooh, yes. and he picks it up and threatened a second not to go for, so Neely picks that up. Scotty's going to use the wood properly so and a spare for both bowlers to sit down. And any comments are appreciated. It's been a little quiet there, but I know there's people watching. That's yeah, I don't know. Be a thank you all. We the appreciate bowl, the, the bowlers. Thank you all. The bowlers. Thank you all. We appreciate the conversations and questions and comments, compliments, complaints. We take it all. Okay, on the right is Mike Jake. On yeah. the left is Timmy Douglas. Previous bowler Scott Douglas's brother. Bowlers all here looking sharp. They want to put on a show for you. Timmy Douglas, who placed second in the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour, A Division South, defeated by Justin Waters in a very exciting match this spring. They count for Jake's, and this is a close string now. All right, Jake's dropped nine on his first ball. Timmy dropped nine on his first ball. Just a four pin, and it's all gone. So a spare for Tim Douglas, and a 10 for Mike Jake. And they're coming up for their fourth box now. So I can tell you from my perspective here, I really like it when the bowlers have big letters on their shirts. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It's a good. So for reference, guys, when you do your team shirts for next year, for whoever's streaming, broadcasting, or whatever, the big letters make a big difference because it's a lot easier to tell the substitution. Uh, if you're not familiar with the bowlers, um, you, you've got their last names right in front of you, no question about it. Yeah. it it's It makes a lot of sense. All right, Mike Jake on a fill, or not on a fill. I'm sorry, Timmy Douglas is on a fill. Okay. So a five drop Kaliri for Jake's. And Timmy on a three pin, but picks up six. And uh, as soon as we finish this box, Paul will be on here for comments. Jake's just pick up, picks up the nine pin in the back. Timmy looking at the one, two, four, and nine, and tries to cut it, doesn't go. Third ball coming up, and then Paul's got a status report. On the third ball, Mike Jakes ends up with an eight box. Tim Douglas with a nine box. All right, Paul. Hello, folks. Paul Grant live. We have uh, Moncton New Brunswick Canada, the World's Tournament here. We have some 11 of them great matches going on, a lot of close ones. Academy Lanes, current champions over Team USA, have a 69 pin win after the first string. Fenway Academy over... Outlaw rides MCW up 60 after one. Central Park Lanes 14 and two after two rounds. One pin win over 2.64. Whoa. Massachusetts team lost by two pins to TBD Bolarama. Unbelievable lanes over Abel Construction by eight pins. Lucky strike over Avon Valley Lanes by 37. Base Bears Road Bolarama by 20 over Bowling Ball Mafia. New England flooring by 15 over Prosperity U. Maria Subs. 45 pin win over Oakland Park. A plus accounting, a low scoring affair over Spikes Chimney Service by six. And a one pin lead for Kingswood Bulletproof, a software company, Bulletproof. One pin lead over Harry's All Stars. Okay, back to the action. Thank you, Paul. And currently bowling, we have Chris Winniars on the left for the Hatchet Men. And Kevin McNally on the right for Stars and Strikes. And Winiers just put up a nice mark. McNally is shooting at just the five pin to pick up a 10.
And he misses it, so he's got a nine box for himself. Yeah, two marks apiece, dozen pins. Okay, Kevin McNally on the right, lane 14. <laughs> Second box in this set. He's on the head pin, a little bit light, and it leaves him, looks like an eight, 10 split. Interesting wood, we'll see how that hat plays out. Uh-oh. Oh, Chris Winniars is off to the left a little bit. You could tell it the release. So picked up three pins. All right, so what do you think, Greg? A cap on that wood or play in the, I think you have to cap the wood. Jeez, or go down the middle. Intersection. Yeah, he went down the middle, perfectly done. There's a mark. Good junction, junction. And Chris, Chris hooked the ball to the right that time, so lo kind of lost his aim point. So right now looking to pick up a 10. And it's a seven box, so not typical of Chris Winniars, but we get those. Everybody, everybody gets it. Let's take a look here. So a dozen pins for Hatcheman, but a couple marks stacked up for Stars and Strikes. Want to fill this big. Seven marks to seven, all told. Two pins and pinning in favor of Hatchetman. This is going to be good. Top of the order, Beaupre has got the 2 6 10. Here's a Soroy's Philly, hasn't got big on all of them, but he sure does this time. They're clattering. Four tips as well, and he's got his biggest one. That's eight. Uh, after I commented about looking for comments, several people mentioned that they are watching and have been watching all day, and oh yeah, we appreciate that. That's a big deal, and I, I hope you're enjoying the production that we're doing here. Enjoy that great bow break. Paul, Paul and I keep switching off, but Greg's been on every match so far. Hello. All right. So Royce's wood way down deep. Can he split that? Not quite. That's a 10. You know, eight, if that eight count for Soroyes is good, this Beaupre spare has to be a good response as well to stem the tide and keep Hatchetman with a conclusive lead. It's certainly a lead. How big is a question? Well, let's see what that, they're clearing the gutter right now. Um, let's see how Beaupre's ball works this time. Uh, this is a young man, uh, Timmy Douglas has a powerful ball too. But, um, we've, we've had him on the radar at some pretty high speeds and I know that he pushes 40 miles an hour a lot on his ball if he doesn't exceed it. So first ball in the fill, well only ball in the fill, he had a spare, is an eight. Six and 10 remain. Yeah, responded to the eight fill perfectly. So Royce, oh. he's on the head pin too, but he ends up with a split that six, seven, 10, I think it is, and maybe four, six, 10, four, six, 10. All right. Beaupre looking for another mark. And uh, just misses his object. So Royce mm. el elects to go to the wood on the left, hoping it'll carry. It did, it did come off and just brushed up against those pins. Not enough energy to take it out. Whoops. And an eight box for Keith Beaupre. So seven fill eight box. Or eight, eight fill eight box, I'm sorry. And uh, so Royce has an eight box as well. All right, close string still. It is, and Dave Chesterkov coming up. And on, that's on the right, on the left is Tom Pelkey. Interestingly, um, Pelkey is bowling with two pound six ounce balls, uh, which a lot of the guys here, in fact, probably the majority are using two pound seven ounce balls. So you need a little lighter ball. That gives you a little more speed. And that ounce makes a difference, believe me. 
but sometimes had to sacrifice a pin action, but he had pretty good action there. You can go down to two fives, but most of the serious competitors are two sixes or two sevens. So Chester Cove dropped five. And you can go down to two four, but I don't know if anyone do does it. Nice yeah, I've shot. never seen those. They're usually not an option for buying balls, but I guess you could do it. I, I just a couple of years ago went from two sevens to two sixes to cut down on how much I drop in Chester Cove with a spare. Healthy. Possible more further right on the wood might have taken it, but that's a harsh piece of wood anyway. It's a horizontal yeah, he piece. He tried to go farther to the left. Okay, it's just an announcement from the management here. Ring, ring, we have your phone. <laughs> okay, waiting for wood to clear. They're going to reset now and go to the second box. Dave Chester Cove on the right, Tom Pelkey on the left. And uh, on the Facebook feed, it's mentioned that Greg is the all around man. Ah. Christopher Scoville. All right, Dave Chester Cove lining up here for this shot. I am, a, I am an all-around person. I do a lot. And look at that. Slow motion nine drop. Big count. Just a 10 pin big fill for Dave. Tom Pelkey, not on a fill. An important first ball for him. He's in the pocket, nice. Is that gonna take it out? Yes, it does. That looked like a strike all the way down and it was. So a strike for Tom Pelkey. Chester Cove trying to make a second spare in this round. And he's got an annoying piece of wood, too. He's probably can't help but trip on it. Yeah, it did work for him. Yeah, that's a tough call because if you try to go down the, the channel, right by the channel, you have risk going into the channel. And you also risk, I mean, you could go clean on the pin, but you may risk hitting a cap of that wood and deflecting everything and nothing going around. But not that time, so both bowlers now coming up, Scott Douglas and Neely. It's Mr. Neely's first name. I should probably just keep these sheets here with me. Russ, Russ Neely Jr. Both bowlers on a fill. Scott's got the advantage right now. He's 43 plus this ball. Russ Neely Jr. is 37 plus a ball after four. Scott Douglas, big ball, wiggly four pin. Russ Neely, a half Worcester for a two fill. So nine fill for Scott Douglas. And a miss for the spare opportunity and Neely tries to deal with that half Worcester leave and uh, went to the three, the three pin and didn't go for him. Scott picks up the 10. Neely with a disappointing five box. That half Worcester leave, it can go, but sometimes it can really mess you up. So a five box is not a good box. Gotta, yeah, got to throw one of those Moncton working balls. Those pins can clatter if you get the break in there. They can really zip into one another. So Scott Douglas in his sixth box, the 62 at the halfway point in the game, got away from, didn't even look at it. He went down, he went to the four and just took out two. Neely, better ball. Um, yeah, I'll answer that. Kathy Budzik asks, what determines the lanes that we broadcast on? Greg, you want to take that one? Uh, just technical specifications. We were hoping to, we were hoping to alternate between left and right divisions so that we could see more of the teams, but pr broadcasting on 12 and 11 has proven difficult. We may reconsider. I'm happy with this camera footage, but uh, the camera vantage we have right now, but uh, right now it's just technical capabilities. Right now we're in a DJ booth, wonderfully provided by Fairlane. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a, uh, it's, it's a blessing. Any further to the left, we'd be standing in front of the washroom, the bathroom, as it is called here. Um, we can't get in the way of that, so that's that. So it's just a matter of what lanes we can cl see clearly on our uh, cameras. It's not really picking the teams. So eventually we're hoping every team here will get their time on the live stream. And um, you know, we're, yeah. work, we're working through that. Our well, original plan, so we're gonna have four of us coming up here, um, but one of the people, Bob Lee, uh, could not come. Yeah. We were gonna do two simultaneous streams. 
Um, wow. For some of the time, maybe not all the time. Timmy Douglas starts with a strike on lane 14. Powerful strike. Mike Jake trying to match him, and oh, geez, what a tease that is. Nine drop with a wiggly five pin. You're welcome, Kathy. It's a good question. Yeah. And a spare for Mike Jake. So didn't get the strike, he got the spare. Yeah. Very few things would have made Bob Lee miss this for, but of course, it was a family reason, you know? That comes first. Timmy on a fill, Tim Douglas on your right. And uh, he's on a strike, so he gets a two ball fill. Um, we're hearing that you're having some trouble hearing. And an eight fill for Mike Jake. I might have to push your level up a little bit. I know you're a little audio shy, but I might have to do that in a second. Oh, no, it's just sometimes it gets a little too loud when I do that, that's all. All right. All right, so, okay. Got a few other people saying it sounds good. Okay. Good, good. I appreciate that. I like it when people tell me I sound good. <laughs> you just haven't looked at me. Yeah. No, we, no, we do appreciate the feedback. Cause I do have ways to tell. You know, I've got the levels. I see the color bars and the, the you know, the audio bars, the volume bars, but stuff like that. But do let us know if I'm missing the forest for the trees. Yeah, we're working with a soundboard and a lot of a lot of cool stuff up here. So it takes me back to my days in radio, and you did radio too, if I remember right, at one point. Mm -hmm. High school radio, mind you, but yeah, mine was college radio. Mm -hmm. Just had to pay to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bowlers. The fifth bowlers are coming up. Chris Winniar is on the right. McNally on the left. Kevin McNally. I'm having trouble with the first names. It's been a lot of people. And McNally with the punch out. Chris Rainier is a 5 7 10 split, but I like that wood. Gives him some opportunity to make this. And uh, the 10 pin, which was the risky one, didn't go. So McNally now is going to try to spare this half Worcester. Little light. Gets some action, but not enough to take everything. Just leaves the 2 7 10. Winnier is looking for a 10 box with the 10 pin. Hits the 10 pin, 10 box, gives him a 49 half, which is a little low for him. McNally looking for a 10 box with the 2, 7, 10, and boy, he gets it clean. He didn't even need the wood for that. He carried the, the two pin over to the 10 and the ball over to the seven. That's how you do that. It is a low string for Winniars, but he's been four for five on the head pin. Two splits and two like bona fide leaves. He has had a few opportunities to go by the wayside in boxes one and two, that's fair generally accurate. Bob Whitcomb. <laughs> Glad to see you here. And here, literally. No, not here, literally. I, I oh, was oh, no, that's right. And uh, Win uh, Chris Winniars. Looks like he's looking at a 6-7 split. In the meantime, McNally went right through the middle. The head pin can be dangerous. You need to hit it, but you hit it a little too full and you get one of these disasters. So Not something you generally see in 10 pin. You might see a 7-10 split or a banana split, but you don't usually see leaves like these. Uh, open box for Chris Winniers. He's going for the two, trying to carry, he carries something over. Not bad, great. Great bid on that. Yeah, silly me. Bobby Witt told me he wasn't coming even. Yeah, I, I just had a great conversation with Craig Holbrook, and uh, he, he told me that you weren't feeling well, so that's okay. We're, we're thinking of you, Bob, and i um, glad, to, glad to see you watching. The, the curse of liking everyone. You have too many good conversations with all the bowlers, and then you don't keep them all straight because you're overwhelmed by all that. Anyway, six boxes down, four to go in this middle strings. So we're basically at the halfway point of this match. Nine marks to 11, so Hatchetman with two extra marks in this string. Pinning is tipping nine in Hatchetman's favor as well. All right, we're coming into the seventh box. No team has made a substitution in this game yet. 
So, so far, they're sticking with the same roster. <coughs> Some teams are putting in bowlers in the third game that rested out games one and two and vice versa, letting some bowlers take a break here. So Royce, he was on a head pin, but boy, I don't like that. It's a four, yeah. nine, 10. And Keith Beaupre, good ball. The four and a seven. Yep. And a spare for Beaupre, and his ball's not going to bother with the ball return. It's going to come back on its own. Um, so Royce didn't pick that up. He made a great bid on that. But takes a 10. All right, going into box eight. Soroy's versus Beaupre. Soroy's on your right. Beaupre yeah. on your left. I only have Scott Soroy's down for one head pin miss so far. Who's that? I only have Scott Soroy's down for one head pin miss. He's got three splits in the... Uh, last three boxes and no marks as a result of that. That good crack at that back row shot we just saw was a microcosm of that. That microcosm emblematic of the hole. All right, box eight. Scott Soroyce off the head pin that time and still gets Tough leave, the one, four, seven, eight, nine. Ooh. Keith Beaupre on the head pin puts a healthy eight on that, <laughs> on that spare, and he's left with the two and a seven. <coughs> All right, so Roy's got curtain on that one. Beaupre, another mark. And I, I didn't catch it. It's Royce for a second ball. Yep, second ball's thrown. He so this is his third. And picks up a 10. Ha! Ah. Not bad. That was a good shot. Went for the two. Got something to bounce off the wall. That's how you do that. Okay, our next one's Pelkey versus Chester Cove. Although Chester Cove on the left, Pelkey on the right. Both bowlers on fills. Pelkey's on a strike, so two balls to fill. Chester Cove on a spare. Pelkey trying to catch up with Dave. And Pelkey's first ball is six. Chester Cove goes to the six pin and picks up just a three fill. Oh, what a, what a bid that was. But Pelkey gets nine in the fill, does not get a spare. And Chesterkov is without spare again, too. Pelkey finding the range, though. Yeah, he, this would be a tough one. Yeah, I was going to say, he tried to avoid the cap on that, but I think he had to cap it. Eight box for Dave Chesterkov. So Chester Cove's at 84, Pelkey's at 69. So Dave has a good 15 pin lead here, which is contributing to the lead for his team. Pelkey's trying to come back on that. Would need a mark to catch up and Dave not to get a mark. So Pelkey in the left pocket and gets a nine drop with seven pin left. Chester Cove, I was a little full in the head pin, and look at that mess. Mm. Four, five, six, seven, ten. <laughs> it's like a full Worcester minus a head pin. Lots of wood there, so it could get interesting. Both wood pieces of wood look very similar to each other. The left one's a little further out than the right one. The shot's clearly going to involve doing that or using that. Rich Lamone, captain of that team, I believe, is taking a look with yeah. Dave to That's right. consult on wh where do you want to go on this one. 
I don't know. What do you think, Greg? My guess is I might go to the left. I agree. If the, le the left wood is out there, that's correct. And that's where Dave's right gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing doing. Gave it a shot, but that's all you can do with that. No guarantees. Get better angle on the head pin next time, I guess. Pelkey closes with a nine box. Not happy about that. Chestrikov looking for a nine or a ten with some luck. Oops. Oh, he's trying to just t hit the tip of that wood and didn't quite get there, so a seven box. Yeah. But still, 13 marks to nine, so. Uh, yeah, overall, marks is still tipping the balance. Scott Douglas on your left. In this middle string. Middle bowler here. And Neely on the right. Get the first name. Russ Neely Jr. I know I had it before, but the old timer's memory is slipping. Now look at look at what Neely ends up with there. So first Scotty put it on a head pin and it has the six, seven, ten split with wood. Neely has a one, two, eight, ten, and a leaning pin. That leaning pin is counted as down. And he makes a good bid on the spare. That the 10 stays up. Same thing on the other side. Scotty shot for the two, tried to carry something over. Nothing went. Seven pin stays up. Open boxes for both bowlers. 10 box for kneeling. Can he make a 10 out of that? Can he hit it? It's not going to. So a nine box for Douglas. Which brings the pinning only within five now. Mm hmm. Still in Hatchetman's favor. Okay. Box eight for both of these bowlers. The third bowlers in the each team's roster. And Neely full on a head pin. He took a little bit of a slip on his release, and I think it brought his ball a little further to the right than he wanted it. Scotty Douglas, who's got the lead on this string so far, he's a little full on a head pin too. So got a better result, six, seven, ten. <coughs> Wood in both both sides, so spread eagle. McNeely's off on the two pin, picks up a couple. Scott goes for the middle, and it works. Because I was debating in my mind which side I might go on. He 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 split the difference and went in the middle. And a respectable eight box out of the half Worcester for Russ Neely Jr. So Scotty's on a mark. So you, you caught the eight box for Neely. I, I see seven, I'm sorry to say. Oh, I, I, pretty sure I saw just the four and the six staying up, but you might may, may have a better perspective. Good old back pin. All right, so Mike Jakes on the right for the Stars and Strikes team and Timmy Douglas for the Hatchet Men on the left. Jake on the three pin. Timmy Douglas, he's on the two pin. He gets some late action. Again, like Keith Brokray, he has a very powerful ball. And we've booked Timmy in the high 30s, low 40s. And a great effort on that spare attempt by Mike Jake. Tim just misses his object pin, so no mark there. And a nine box for Mike Jake. Mike Jake was on the microphone here a little bit ago. Uh, nine box for Tim Douglas. Yeah, stole the two extra marks for Hatchetman, so this is starting to balloon on in their favor. With both Beaupre and Douglas on marks. Yeah, without counting any open um, spares or strikes. 35 pin lead for the Hatchetman. Ow. That hurt. That was a three pin hit, and only the three pin went. It flew between the other pins. That's just not fair. <laughs> so he's got nine to shoot at, my, at full rack minus the three. Can't have been and, that bad. And not a bad, not a bad ball on it. He's on the head pin, takes out everything but the check mark left, which is the four pin leave. Tim looking for a spare. And uh, catches a middle pin, so will not have a mark in this box. 
Jake looking to pick a 10 out of this is very doable. Eight box. Tim misses everything. Is seven box for Tim Douglas. All right, coming up to the next set of two bowlers. And uh, we have Chris Winniars on the left and Kevin McNally on the right coming in to do their seventh and eighth boxes. Yeah, I love this juxtaposition of comments, uh, Ray, one of our good viewers. I know Bob and he is a real gentleman. Yep. A Candlepin Bowling Network under Bob Lee. LOL, Timmy has never been clocked under 42 miles per hour. Oh, well, all right. I'm sorry, <laughs> Bob. It was somewhere around there. I'm approximating, okay? You know, I can't remember the exact number. I know it was fast. Thank you for your gentlemanly critique. <laughs> uh, I thought he was up over 40. Yeah. All right, seven on the first ball for McNally. We're a bowling community. We tease. <laughs> I think Bob's serious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, spare for McNally. Timmy's looking at the four horsemen left. Wood behind the one and the two pin and a little bit behind the four pin. That might help. Just off the head pin. He got everything but the edge uh, uh, or the, the this head pin. And that's Chris Winnier. It's not Tim Douglas. I've got Tim Douglas right in front of me. And uh, for some reason that carried over into my verbalization. Nine box for Chris Winniers. Yeah, 230 of you. So McNally now on a mark in the eighth box. Trying to catch this game up for them. Oh, you met Bob Whitcomb. In fairness, yeah, they both are. But, yeah, Bobby Whitcomb, Man. you betcha. That's a Hall of Fame personality and a Hall of Fame bowler. At Just last. inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yes. We'll have that Hall of Fame ceremony for you on Candleton Bowling Network as soon as I can edit it. The stupid sickness, which I hope you don't hear too much of here. I, I'm not contagious anymore. I promise you that. But. So, uh, four Phil for McNally, spread eagle. Uh, three even, yeah. Three. I, I saw I stood up to try to see the pins yeah. directly, and I still couldn't see one behind there. Yeah. They're there. Another slip at the line for Stars and Strikes. I wonder if it's 14 developing some rut there. Was that the lane one of the bowlers overslid on? It might have been 13, though. No, it was 12-11, excuse me. So, I no, I, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. No problem. No, it's no problem. I have a sound in my bad ear. The sound is in my bad ear, so uh -huh. someone will just get a little muffled. Wait a second. Uh, Switch that around. All right, that's good. How about that? Yep, that's good. All right. And seven and a nine. All right. Winnier sits down on a nine box. McNally on a seven box. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, you see it's ballooning for Hatchetman at the current moment. Well, the Hatchetman lost a couple of pins. But they're still in a commanding lead with two boxes to go. Yep, marks are going to override that for the time being. Oh, they've got say. two marks too, so add fills to that. Yeah, you can see why they're 12 and 4. So I think they're in pretty good shape. That's Beaupre 6 in the fill. Let's take that scoreboard back and uh, put that on the board. All right, and Keith Beaupre, nice head pin hit. And fortunately, the wood's there to give him a chance at this. That's the 5, 6, 9, 10 leave, the triangle plus an extra pin. Royce to the two pin on his hit. Um, one, three's ten left. Wood in between. Make a little spare. Beaupre's got to. Oh, he went for the triangle. Try to kick it over. All right, that didn't work. He took out the middle pins. Still yeah. the five and ten. It was very deep wood in fairness. I'm not sure if it would have worked. I, I don't think. I would don't think it would either. Um, but it was. I thought it was a chance. So, so Royce misses his spare, and Keith Beaupre, oh, I, he didn't try to touch the wood. That's interesting. Or if he did, he was off. So eight box for Beaupre, a nine box for Sir Royce. There's some great personalities, you know, Ray, as you say, Bob Whitkins, a gentleman, 
I don't know Bob very well. I've run into him a few times. But there are a lot of great personalities in this game and people that are willing to help you and spread their experience and wisdom and have a good time. And uh, I love it. It's a great community. Beaupre drops seven, one, two, four. So Rice drops eight, and he's got that seven, eight split. Beaupre picks up the mark. So Royce has a 7-8. He's got some slanted wood next to the 8-pin. Eight box, eight pin. That might help. He's going far over there, and yes. it gets it. Not quite how I lined it up, but he's a better bowler than I am, so he made the right call and got the mark. So Bopre is at 121 in a fill, and Sir Royce is at 115 in a fill. Yeah, it's got Sir Royce has more marks than anyone uh, in the entire match. All right, look at that. The power on that ball, he's off to the left, but he still picks up seven. Seven in the field for Beaupre. So Royce, there's a strike on spare. Feel the power. <laughs> That's from an arcade game. I know, I remember that. Good finishes both. Oh, you play Tower of Power? Sweet, I love that game. What's that? Oh, you play Tower of Power? Good game. I, I don't remember what it was. That's the one I remember the to arcades. I never got into video games, but. Yeah, well, it was one of those newer arcade games. Well, it's kind of an old one by now, where like the line goes and you try to stop it in the wind zone. Nah, it sounds like every game ever these days. When I was in college in Indiana, we had a little arcade in the student union buildings, or place, so to speak. And when I lived in Northern Michigan in the summers, we'd go to the arcades there. So Dave Chester Cove drops. Four, five, five. Okay, the, ni the nine is not there. It's a real Cleary, and uh, Pelkey drops five as well. Four horsemen plus a ten. Significantly different five for Pelkey. He has that outpost, which is an easier pin to pick up. Generally. Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. Got to hit the head pin on that. Got to hit the head pin on this too, which he does, and somehow the seven doesn't go. I thought that that was a good clean hit. Yeah. Got sticks though. Chester Cove took out the pin he didn't want to take out. Hmm. And Chester Cove with a disappointing six box puts him in 97 after nine. Pelkey with a 10 box puts him at 88 after nine. Yeah. So picked up a couple of pins on his opponent, Dave Chester Cove. Yeah, it's within it's within three right now, but the fact that it's 15 marks to 11 and uh, bonus pins are lopsidedly in Hatchman's favor is just overriding the whole match right now. Yep, and as I mentioned before, Pelkey's throwing the two sixes. Chester Cove, I imagine, I, I can't confirm this, probably is throwing two sevens, but might not be. And Dave punches out a half whister left. Pelkey. Uh-oh. Nine box, or nine drop, ninth. Oh. Uh, leaves a five pin only with a Still got big a barn door in front of it. Still got a bounce for that out, so sorry I couldn't resist. Chester Cove trying to spare the half whisker. I haven't seen anybody do that yet today. Doink. And there's a spare for Pelkey. Chester Cove trying to get out of this 10th box with a 10 box. He's got to cut something over to take that seven pin and cut something over to take that other two, but either strategy involves hitting the head pin. He's got to hit the head pin this time. And similar situation. Barn door, a uh, little plank in front of the six. Not a big barn door, mind you. Still could help. He hits a head pin. He gets two out of the, the other three pins. So a nine box for Dave Chester over 106. That gives Pelkey the chance to go ahead of Dave here. He's got a 98 plus a ball. So eight or better, eight ties, nine wins. They're not, they're not sp strictly bowling each other. It's a team event, but you do want to beat your opponent if you can. And uh, he's off the head pin quite a bit, and it's a five fill. All right, we're going to get to see Scotty Douglas up. His brother Tim is giving him some coaching and some encouragement here. Scott's on a fill. It's a 91 and a ball. And Russ Neely Jr. over at lane 11, or 13, is at 70. Looking to catch up with Scott. In the ninth and tenth boxes, it's going to require some serious marking to do that. Scotty's got a 21 pin lead plus. It's 
Scott Douglas, strike. Came in on the head pin. I thought it looked a little full, but it wasn't. It's a strike for Scott. Strike on spare. Good time to do that. Their lead was starting to get a little slim, not counting spares. Let's see if Pelkey can get the mark. No, he just went left. Second time today we've seen that from Scott Douglas in this match. Russ Neely drops a nice nine drop, leaves a 10 pin and some wood. So that's at least a 10 fill for Scott Douglas on that strike. And Neely's got a spare for himself too. So both bowlers will come up for fill balls. I feel so sheepish, the internet went out on that one. At least Scotty already has a double. That's why his little smudge is green at the top instead of yellow under those uh, total uh, game uh, mark indicators. All right, so if, if your video went out for a minute, Scott Douglas just dropped a strike on a strike. He's on a double, he's looking for a triple. And just off on the three pin. What's weird is it's not like my cable went out or anything, it just, McNeely puts seven on his. T Scott's got another fill ball to go here. And uh, not too bad. I'd take a 17 fill all day long. So seven on the second strike. 142 game for Scott Douglas over Russ Neely's 88. Uh, should be 95, excuse 95, me. 95, sorry, 95. I didn't, I didn't have the 10th box there. Yeah, so I 142 to 95 on that one. That's it. And that moves the Hatchiman's lead up significantly. Close match here in, the, in this second, and the fourth bowlers, Mike Jake versus Tim Douglas. Tim Douglas on your right, he's at 96 after eight. Mike Jake on your left, he's at 90 after eight. Douglas, Scott's brother, trying to copy what his brother did. On a head pin, drop seven. Mike Jake, it's a Cleary right for Horseman plus the eight. And Tim Douglas, great bid effort, but the 10 doesn't go for him. And uh, Jake's just picks up the eight pin back there. So he gets a 10 for 106 after nine. Jakes picks up a 10 also for 100 after nine. Jimmy looking to close big here on this one. His team's in a good position right now, so if teams on, Tim ends up under his average, it's not the worst thing in the world, but there's still total in that to consider. Look at, he's spinning him around a lot. Jakes is off on the left Ooh. and getting some oh. late action and that's a strike. That's how you get a strike. So a strike for Mike Jakes in the 10th. Tim Douglas is faced with a one, two, seven, nine, ten, and I think the five is back there too. Yep, any way you want it, that's what, the way we need it. But Ten, that wood may make things interesting. The one was the penultimate to fall. Somehow you gotta, you gotta be on a head pin get things moving and carry all over the place and you might just get this mark. Deadwood check. Okay, want to make sure that that wood is fair. I don't know if Tim thinks he's in a good position or not. It's called out. Nope, they left it, called it good. Yeah, they took out the other piece of Deadwood. It's not a... The reverso okay. change oak. All right, so I don't know if Tim thinks that's good or not. I think yeah. it's good myself. <laughs> I just, but it's like he threw up his hand to say like, well, why didn't you take mine? And uh, getting some action here. No, not quite enough to cover the nine and 10. Dodged it pretty good. Maybe you wanted to spray it into the mix, but. He had the right idea. And it, you know, it's funny, that piece of wood is still there. It's a good pinning shot, if, any, if nothing else. Yeah, he didn't hit that wood. It's still sitting there on the left. Well, we'll never know. Ball coming back. It's kind of comical here. They go all the way in the pit sometimes and come back anyway. And there it goes. He took that pin out. Doesn't count. <laughs> 
So Mike Jake gets to throw a fill and has a good opportunity to get ahead of Tim Douglas's 115. First ball. Ooh. All right. Well, they're called the lucky strikes for a reason, probably, because that was a lucky strike. No, no, no. Lucky strikes on 11 and 12. Lucky strikes. No, stars and strikes. You're right. I'm sorry. It's getting. <laughs> they had strikes in their name, but it's an eighth fill. Ends up with a 118, defeating Tim Douglas by three pins. Yeah. Adding or cutting into the total some, but only one more bowler to go, and that bowler's got to make up over 40 pins to be able to get the string in two boxes. That's going to be really tough to do, especially against Chris Winniers. I know Winniers right now is on a 76. Big Nally's on an 85 after eight. Yeah. That's a long hill to climb, and uh, I think this game's likely to go to the Hatchiman. And Winniers is off onto the two pin and leaves a clear. You're right with some movement in the pins. Nope, that ain't gonna do it. And uh, barring a Magna this Magnally, should. unfortunately. It's not mathematical, but it should be it. For this string, still one more to go. So remember, this is the third of three matches today. So after this, our coverage is done for the day, but we're here all week here in Moncton, New Brunswick. And we'll be starting again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Atlantic time, which is 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, back from there, or forwards from there. GMT minus Look four. Look at that. Ooh. Nice spare from McNally. That and he's excited. Pretty. I'd be too. That was beautiful. That was great. And Winniars picks up a nine box. So a nine box for Chris Winniars. And it's Scott McNally, correct? No, that's Scott Soroyce. I'm sorry. i got to get the... I'm getting better at the Kevin McNally. Kevin McNally. McNally with a strike spare combination. That was big. And Chris Winniars takes out seven on his first ball. Mm. And Kevin McNally with a big nine fill on that spare. Chris Winniars yep. is, is going to be open. He leaves the 10 cut. He and a few others, Chester Cove and Douglas, uh, Timmy Douglas, are losing the range late. And a spare for Kevin McNally. Winniars looking to close out with a 10. He can't get to 100 on this, but at this point, it really doesn't matter. So, however, you may lose a string, but total is critically important. And Kevin McNally has the opportunity to reduce the lead that the hatchet men have by up to 10 pins here with this ball. And uh, not terrible, seven fill, 121 string. There we go. Now we'll set that to third of three. And take that away and show you the whole scoreboard. Let's take a look. There we go. So you see Scott Douglas turned out to be the MVP for Hatchetman in that second string there. Beaufray was leading the charge as well. Scott Sorois is doing quite well for himself. You know, he's got those eight marks and is starting to count them good too, including a spare strike on the end. Maybe he might be the X Factor of Stars and Strikes. It's going to take a couple of match points out of this tilt. Scott Sorois and Keith Beaufray to start off. We'll have the scoreboard back up in a moment. All right, starting game three of three in the third match of the day. Lots of threes. We are in lane 13 and 14 at Fair Lanes in Moncton, New Brunswick. Great bowling alley. This is this is classic candle pin at its best in this, uh, this facility. And some of the best bowlers in the game. One reason to love overhead scoring, it takes some time to put the paper the right way around so I can get time to reset for you all. There you see the final results there. Remember, yeah. it's round robin, two divisions of a dozen teams each. All right, I'm just grabbing myself another drink here. You got it. Are oh, we drinking a Coke? I right. am. Excellent. Helps the throat. 
Hang on, let me turn your levels down. That's better. Okay. Just so you're not crinkling the package there. Here, I'll put you back up. There we go. We try to be somewhat professional when we're doing this. Yeah, always. Gre Greg work, works with me on that. So we started the round. Keith Beaupre on the left for the Hatchet Men. And Paul wants to give us an update, so it's a good idea. So we're going to do that on, uh, while this box continues. Okay, Beaupre misses a spare. And Sorice picks up a 10 box. Sorice has, or Beaupre has just the ten, 5 pin to shoot at. Oh, the 5, the 1 and the 5, is it? Yep, 1 and 5 for an 8 box. Okay, Shall we turn so it over? Go ahead, Paul Grant. Hi, right, Paul Grant here, live update here from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. The Men's World's ICC Championship at Fairlanes. We have other 11 other matches going, some good ones. Academy Lanes leads four points to none. One of the first two strings of Team USA. They won by 69. They're up 86 after two. Fenway Academy over Outlaw Riders MCW tied two points apiece. Fenway Academy is up 25 in the match going to the final string. Central Park Lanes, East Boston Mass, won the first by one pin, but lost by 88 to 2.64. They're down 87, tied two points apiece. Massachusetts team TBD Bolarama are tied two points apiece. Bolarama up 17 in the match. Unbelievable lanes. Two and two with Able Construction. Unbelievable is up by three after winning by eight in the first. They're up three with one string to go. Other matches, Lucky Strike up 53 and four points to over Avon Valley lanes. Bayers Road Bolarama up four nothing over a bowling ball mafia. Four more, New England flooring, four nothing lead over Prosperity U by 72 pins. Maria Sub undefeated in the day, 20 and 0 now, up four nothing over Oakland Park by 158 pins. Oh. A plus accounting up 23 over Spikes Chimney Service. And the final one, Kingswood Bulletproof, four nothing lead over Harry's All Stars, 71 pin lead in the match. Maria Sub still on a tear. That's in the right division, of course. A lot of stuff to go through, but some of you are following specific teams, and it's good to know where your teams are right now. So Tom Pelkey in the right against Dave Chestercove coming into yeah. third box after we saw a 20 to 18. Good start for both of those bowlers. Pelkey was on the two pin and uh, had a half Worcester minus a five. Dave Chesterkov on the 1 2 10. And uh, hits a head pin. He's trying to get around that wood a little. I thought that wood didn't look good, and I think he agreed with me. And a nice nine box for Tom Pelkey. Chesterkov. Be interesting. Is he going to go for that two pin with that wood there, or is he going to just straight go for the 10 and take a nine? Oh, he's trying the two pin, but um, again, trying to work with that wood, and it was tough for him, so an eight box. Yeah, having that dangerous wood has a psychological effect of, of like, you don't want to hit it badly, so sometimes you try to avoid it, and you get a little, a little too much. Too scared off it. Okay, Pelkey on box two. He, his ball uh, took a break to the two pin, and we gave him a half blister. Chesterkov hits a two pin and gets a much better result. It's a split, but he's got a lot of wood on the deck there with a one three seven ten. Pelkey trying to spare the half Worcester. Uh, great bid on that. He was in the pocket, didn't go. The four and the five straight up. Okay, Chesterkov with the spare attempt. Misses a head pin, and that was the must-hit pin or his object pin, but he cleared out everything else. So both bowlers will be absent spares this time. Looks like Pelkey picked up one as a nine box. And Chester Cove has a ten box. Nothing wrong with that. I just dropped my battery, that's all. Nothing else valuable or dangerous, anything. Yeah. Can you reach out? Yeah, I got you. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. There you go, my friend. I've, I've got my cell phone here monitoring the, the ah, text. Ah, substitution. What did we see? Substitution. All right. Let's go, Douglas. We got Brendan O'Dowd. I know this guy, Brendan O'Dowd. I've bowled against him in the ACST before, and uh, Brendan has been really coming on strong and as a good bowler. Stars and strikes also substituting for with Aaron Basford. Uh, that first ball just has to get adjusted. Not a lot of time to do that here. So Basford a substitution too, and he's got this one the high low jack and went by the head pin. Brendan hoping to throw a strike ball here. Oh, could, uh, not too, a little far off on that. He's off on the three pin. I hope they got a chance to warm up before they were called in. There are a dozen more lanes available on the right side. I'm not sure what the warm up. A lot oh, of the actually, bowlers have been. Oh, look at that. He picks up the, the uh, high low jack for their 10. And O'Dowd trying to get a 10, and he goes through the hole, so he's got a four box. And that, yeah, the bowl, bowlers have been using the other 12 lanes for warming up. Sometimes yep. the cap, I've seen the captain say, hey, you're going to be up in a little bit, and they'll go down and throw a few boxes just to get warmed up. That's right. So there are rules about that. Like, I think the rule is you get six balls without hitting the button, basically. That, that's what's in the rules. Yeah. Many thanks to Dave Barber and the tournament organizers uh, for all right, Bass Let me have a look at that. Bassford went to the left under the four pin and took out three. Look at that. O'Dowd's on the head pin that time. Mm. Little full. And he's looking at the three, six, and the four, and the seven on the left. So Bassford uh, picked up everything but the one, two, three. O'Dowd mm. trying to take that off the wall. Twice accurate. Brendan throws a great ball. He doesn't say a lot when he's competed. He, he's, he's very quiet, but um, very accurate. And he's on his object, but sits down with an eight box. All right, next round, Scott Douglas. He's in the left, not Timmy. And a substitution on the other side. So the change in order on the hatchet men, Scott Douglas rather than Tim Douglas. And we have uh, Mr. Nelson, I don't know his first name. I don't know if I have that. I, I have a guess, I don't want to be wrong. Uh, I don't have that. Might be Al Nelson, I'm so sorry. All right, so. This is the first time we've seen him up so far. And this is his first ball, his first box in game three. And throws a pretty decent ball, but onto the two pin, and he has a six drop. The one, three, six, and seven are left. Scott Douglas, double strike in the last match. And he's gonna get another one? Ah, not quite. So that's not a strike nine. Look at that. So sometimes Paul gets ahead of himself and calls it a strike when it's a nine. So it's a strike nine. And I do the opposite sometimes, nine strike. All right, ni uh, nine box for, or well, open box for Scotty Douglas. Nelson shooting at the one seven. And Timmy Douglas trying to pick up the 10 box with the 10 and he picks up a 10 with the 10 10. Yeah, we're going to talk to Rich Lamont. Right, we're talking to Captain Rich Lamoni here of the uh, Hatcherman. First of all, how did you get the name Hatcherman, first of all? Oh, you heard that on the podcast, but I'll tell the story again. So my brother-in-law used to play basketball in a summer league in Winthrop, and it was a pretty good summer league. There were some guys that could have made the ABA or were in the ABA and were a little bit older. Scotty Douglas um, throws a strike. He used to hack the team's best player. So he would fall, foul out and they called him the hatchet man. Um, my, he married my sister in 1994. Four, 94, I gotta think about it now. Uh, and um, no, no, yeah, 1994. And uh, they were in a car accident with a drunk driver. And he, and he, did, he didn't survive. So 
that as soon as I got my tickets the first time as a captain, I, I knew exactly what my team name was going to be. His initials are in the axe, and uh, the rest is history. Now, we talked earlier, how do you how do you manage a team? Like, you know, you have the Eagles, and you have eight, ten right. people in your team. People get hurt feelings, I'm sure, sometimes. How come I can't bowl? I'm bowling well. Am I coming out? When am I going to bowl? You know, wh how do you handle the situation as a coach? Um, all the shut up. No. Um, <laughs> so, it, you know, one of the things that I have been trying to do since I got my team was to make my Friday team my world's team. I want to see these guys every Friday, and I want to see them up here in November. If we gel together on Fridays, then we're going to gel here. So, you know, uh, when you have a common goal to win the championship, and we've seen New England enough, we know that we have to set our egos aside in order for the common goal. Um, and, you know, when, when you have a team like ours, we gel as a group because we all make fun of Timmy. No. How do you make the decision? Is it based on emotions? Based on how the body language is? How do you make the decision yourself? Well, you can see a guy's confidence. You know, you can tell that he's upset. You know, one of the signs is the hands out. The hands out by the sides. Like, God, you know, God damn, the hands out by the sides constantly, every ball. When they start doing that and they're not hitting where they want to, you can, you can see the body language. You can see the body language. Um, a lot of times it's how you feed off of each other. Steve and Sean have been bowling one, whatever spot it is, back to back. We've had Keith in our lineup and we've on Fridays and moved it around. And I just kept Steve in front of Sean, just because that's what Sean knows. Now he's used to it and that's what happens. So, you know, sometimes too, it depends on what spot it is. There's guys that like certain spots. Timmy doesn't like to bowl first. He may have to go first at some point, but I'm not gonna actively put him there. You know, I might have to have him fill in for somebody. Um, you know, we won our second game of the day, 680 to 678, and I took Sean out. He looked a little wild to me, and I wanted to get someone else into the into the role and in, involved. And uh, they were able to. We took the next string. Chris Winningas is not your highest average bowler. I asked this question before the Friday night polling, but he's so accurate. Why does he bowl ankle a lot of times, despite people with higher averages? Well, Timmy likes to set up. Timmy loves. To, he said. I mean, he says I like setting you up. So. Um, we kind of settled on that, and Chris is just such a good pinner. If he's struggling, he's not giving pins away. That's the important thing. So you can't have somebody that goes up there and throws a seven box, but then throws a strike. When Chris gets two tens, he's still got 20 pins. We gotta wait for that fill, and now we've lost three pins in count in those two boxes. So the other way, at least we're e you know, even if the guy has a, a strike and a, and a 10 box. We're waiting for that to happen. So Chris doesn't give pins away. So I think that's important. You know, I think that's something that you gotta you gotta keep your eye on is is how they're pinning as well. I think that's super important. You know. Thanks, Captain Mitch Lamoni. And you know, Chris bowled five games in a row. At some point, you need a break, just just a mental break. You know, it's 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 a uh, it's a it's an art. I'm gonna hurt people's feelings, but I'm I'm trying to do the best I can. Um, I am a proponent for trying to get everybody in every single day. There are certain teams that say, you're going to sit all day. This is your day to rest. And I feel like that's a detriment because the next day, that guy might be rusty. He might feel uncomfortable. He might think that I have a short leash. you gotta, you got to give the guys a leash. Um, and there are some guys that when you're going to bring them in, they need two boxes. you got to pull a guy in the fourth and not in the fifth. There's some guys that can come in one box, and then they're fine. So you're going to know that too. It's a process. It's taken me a lot, a lot to get to this point. And you have to trust your team. I think what's good about my guys is they'll come right at me and disagree. And I'll say, okay, why do you think, you know, like I'm not going to get mad at them. We're a team. It's all of us. I need all of them. I can't bowl. I need all of them this year. I got to listen to them. They're the ones out there. Great insight, Rich Lamoni, captain. The Hatchman, thank you for taking time out. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right, back to Greg and Dan Castle. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Rich. Always yeah, good to hear from Rich Lamoni. Yeah, Bope with that a big real student of the game. And we just saw Keith Beaupre on the right drop a bomb. And so Royce on the left is on a fill for this last strike. And it's an eight fill. 
So we're looking for a 10 box. You know what's interesting about that interview with Chris Winniard is that we've been seeing it in the string as well. Chris seems almost more comfortable when he's pinning because we've seen a few second balls get away, but when he's faced with an eagle, he just pins so perfectly. It's like one eagle wing gone, two eagle wings gone, and you can count on that. So I can see what Rich Lamoni means by the reliability there. P pinning is so... Hang on, raffle number. <laughs> 4 0 0 6 9 8 people. Chester Cove's got six, four. Nine, All right, they just did the 50-50 raffle here, and we had some tickets up here in the booth, so we were very interested yeah. in what the numbers were. Um, you were so, talking about pinning before that interruption. And uh, one of our friends, Angel Morales, apparently won. <laughs> so he's one of the bowlers that we frequently see at meets. And uh, so now let's catch up. Uh, Greg's been uh, keeping his score all along. New England flooring. It was a team purchase. They just won the raffle. Okay, eight box for Pelkey. Chester Cove with a five box. Not happy about that. Yeah, so Pitts got taken out in the clearance effort, I'm guessing. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. So Pitts got taken out in the clearance effort, so, but it is five. So after three. Three boxes, Chester Cove's a 23, Pelkey a 26. Chester Cove look, trying to come back here. And that's five box. And there's a strike for Pelkey. So I don't know how many strings all these guys have pulled, but if they've bowled all three um, matches, all three rounds, then this will be their ninth string. And uh, fatigue's a factor here. <laughs> now we've only just gotten started, that's true. That's right. But the good news for you all, we got the bowling all week long, so remember, it's Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday through Friday is round robin, and then late Friday into Saturday, we've got the knockout rounds. And Dave Chester Cove. Pulls a 10 box for 33 after four. So this one's a lot closer than the last two. Brendan O'Dowd back up on lane 14 and Bassford for the Stars and Strikes team is up on lane 13. Out, it's right in that pocket and gets only five down. Bassford on a head pin, tad full, takes out six. Three, six, ten, and over there is a four pin on the left. Brendan's fortunate enough to have them all together. Just has to get the object and get them all to go. Tries to mm. carry the wood. That was interesting. Uh, he very accurate on that, but the seven pin didn't carry. He'll have wanted to go straight at that, but. Put a pretty good shot at it anyway. Bastard had a good bid on that one. Apparently bidding on a, putting a bid on a spare is also a term that doesn't always translate across the board. Like, what, is this an auction or something? Uh, Some, you, you made someone a, said that. That's seven. You made a good offer on that, and that came out <laughs> of the channel, so Bastard will have a seven box. Yeah. yeah, it's like you made a good offer on that. Yeah. You know, a, a good yeah, try. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It makes perfect sense, of course. Yeah. So... You'll hear that a lot. And, and what's interesting is I don't think any of us ever get bored of hearing the same terms pretty much every time we bowl. Yeah. Brendan O'Dowd, uh, both a techie and historian for the game, works with Ali Chad, you know, supplements oh, yeah. uh, Frank DeLuca's technical prowess. Uh, as both producer, uh, archivist of old shows, the Ali Chad Classics. Nice nine drop for Brendan O'Dowd. Yeah, he, he's a wealth of knowledge and 
Yeah, he, he, he frequently writes on Facebook when things come up, and, and it's very impressive. I think he's also one of those people helping out with, like, synthesizing all the information about historical tournament wins. And he that makes a nice spare. Yeah. He comes off the tip of the wood to take out the 10 pin. Foster off to, off to the left. Still has five to go. Yeah, a lot. Uh, what Rich Lamoni talks about with pinning is so critical because you got to you got to use that third ball, and uh, if you can walk away with a game that's all nines and tens, it'll be decent. So Bastard finishes with a nine box. Yeah, speaking of, he had five before that third ball. Yeah, so that, that that's big. I mean. My one league back in Natick, the Monday Men's League, which actually there's a few guys from that here, uh, quite a few guys actually. Um, one of the awards at the end of the year was the highest string without a mark. And it usually was around 95 to 97. So that means almost all, you could, you could get 100 with no marks. I've never seen that. So Scotty Douglas, another strike. Strike, another double. A third double. He's got to double every string. He got so frustrated with the fact that he didn't get the last one on the internet. At least he got two on tape. He's got three. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's saying to the camera, I still love you. I still love you. We got that one, Scotty. <laughs> Scotty is a very animated bowler. He's a lot of fun to hang out with go to his matches yeah. and that. He's off an injury recently, and he's doing really well since, obviously. His brother and him are quite close and supportive of each other. So yeah. There's that green blip again next to the yellow ones to indicate the double strike. And a nine box for Nelson. That's so a good, fine. Good he's depending on that time, side. He's up against the buzzsaw a little bit right now and Scotty Douglas. <laughs> yeah, just a lot bit. Anytime you bowl one of the Douglas brothers, that can happen. A double every string by Scott Douglas. Oh, it's only the third. That was only the third box. Yeah. Oh, oh we think we're... Oh, I won't say it. Whoops. All right, seven's the first ball. Nelson looking to... Makes some ground here and throws a decent ball off on the two pin, just misses the head pin. And that's a tough leave for a four mm. horseman. I don't yeah. like that wood. No, it's bad wood. Maybe if you get the head pin to go behind the wood, then it'll ride the rails, but kind of have to go outside maybe. Yeah, I think that's an outside hit because you hit it inside, you're gonna. And Douglas with a nine fill on that second strike. Yeah. That's his best double strike fill yet. He's had a lot of practice at those. All right, he's just gonna try to get as much as he can, hope the head pin carries and for Nelson, mm. it did not. So Timmy's left with it, or Scotty's left with just a head pin, as is his opponent, Nelson. I wish I had the first name. Al Nelson. I'm yeah. sorry? It, oh, it's Al Nelson. It's Al Nelson, okay, thank you. Yeah. Sorry if that didn't make it over to you. That's okay, we're, we're communicating, and both bowlers end up on a 10 box. I don't see anybody complaining yet. <coughs> well, some of us, help, some people helping out in chat. Thanks so much. Remember, this is Candleton Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. We'll re rack on 14. So apparently, the head pin is afraid of Tim Douglas <laughs> for good reason. Yeah. Hang on a second, Dan. I want to get through this. Please like and follow on Facebook and uh, subscribe on YouTube so that you're always in the know about all our uh, upcoming matches. Uh, just hit the buttons you see, like on Facebook or subscribe on YouTube. Uh, either way, we greatly appreciate your support by watching. Thank you. And on Candlepin Bowling Network, we have not only the Worlds, but many, many ACST matches, Atlanta Candlepin Singles Tour, and uh, multiple tournaments in the Pro League and other things along those lines. So if you have a bowler that you are fond of and want to see a lot of their stuff, they could be up there. Douglas starts off on the three pin, takes out just five, and Scott McNally drops eight. Verify that's the name again, because my me I'm getting tired, my memory may fade. Timmy Douglas, nice strike spare. He made that look easy. Kevin McNally, I called him Scott again, sorry Kevin, but you got a spare, so if you come back and listen to the 
recording. I got it right. It took a while. Both bowlers on spares. One pin separates him. Kevin McNally is at 27 and a ball. Tim Douglas at 26 and a ball. Timmy Douglas on the fill. Oh, almost gets a strike. Not quite nine drop. It's Kevin McNally. He's on the pocket and he gets a seven fill. Like that eight, just a late pin, only now. Late fall on that. Yeah, it falls nice too. Douglas back to back spares. Oops, I lost my screen. There we go, I got it back again. Douglas with a 10, McNally with a 10. Oh, those are spares both ways, I think. Yeah, I went blank for a second here, and my, my screen went there we out, go. so. All right, so marks, they are matching scores. <coughs> Both at 45 and a ball after, and now we go back to look at the scores at this point in the game. Go ahead. Yeah, eight to four, basically nine to four in terms of marks, so that should have been piling it on again. 32 pin lead currently for the Hatchet Men. And uh, they also have one additional mark to, to, to fill. <coughs> And uh, we're going to see Saroy's first on the right for the Stars and Strikes. And Keith Beaupre's on a strike. I bet you he'd like to make a double to match Scotty. And uh, not this time, unless he gets some late actions. Three in his first ball, one, two, and four. Saroy's drops five on his first ball. He's got an interesting leave, a diamond and a seven. Yeah. And only picks off the left pin of the diamond. Even if you threw the eagle shot, you wouldn't carry the corner necessarily. That's a toughie. Oh, wow. How did that not go? Gopre hit it perfectly. He gets a nine in the strike. But no spare this time, and I thought he was right on that. And a nine box. Still gains a couple. This looks like a six box for Royce. Yep. Okay. All right, we're going to box five. Keith Propre is 74. That's right. Yep, sorry for the delay. That's okay. It's up there. Maybe faster than the people on a pen sometimes. I don't know. All right, so Rice. Nice eight drop, the one, two, just the only ones to shoot at. Keith Propre picked up a bunch of pins for his team. Woo. And a seven drop. Fireball he threw. One, two, and five. Both Saroy shooting at the one and two. No problem with that. So there's a spare for Saroy. Scott Saroy's. And Beaupre trying to spare this. And there it goes. Got something to come Ooh. off the wall and take that. Yeah. I he think thinks that was a little bit lucky. Uh, yeah, object fell last. That's why you thought that. Backsplash has happened. That power ball he throws does do that kind of stuff. All right, now we've got Tom Pelkey and Dave Chestercove. Dave Chestercove, who has an awful lot of microphone time of his own with the New England Candleton show. Can't wait. It's no it's actual a, pressure, Franklin TV, but we'd love to see it. It's in the books. They just need to start the broadcast. That's on uh, public access television in Massachusetts as well. It's not just live stream. Tom Pelkey, right lane, he's on a strike. And a light hit on the head pin mm. takes out just four. Didn't look that bad. Chesterco, no, it looked good. I thought, I don't know. Yeah, no, 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 no. I thought it looked great. The pins disagree, that's all I'm saying. Well, he's got three to the left and a triangle to the right, so if you can make something out of this. All right, turn it into an eight, maybe a nine. All right, it's an eight fill. That's respectable, nothing wrong with that. And Chesterco trying to spare this, and he came in right on the object pin, didn't take it out. So both bowlers trying for a 10 now. 
And Tom Pelkey ends up with a nine. And Dave Chesterko probably going for the right two. He is. And that's weird. He got the hmm. six pin and the, I think there's a four pin over there. But the. That's right. Extreme left of the split went, but the one that looked like it would go automatically did not. So 53 to 42 in favor of Pelkey right now, coming into their fifth box. And is it going to go? Oh. oh, see, yeah. And see both you. bowlers do the same thing. Both drop big <laughs> nines with big explosive hammer balls and a wiggly pin left over, but. Pelkey gets his for a spare. And let's see if Chester Cook can close his. And he does not. He goes wide to the right. If he'd gone on the pin to the left, I think that would have gone. Top one, just as DC thought he was finding the range. So he'll have to settle for a 9 or a 10. And a nine it is. So a 51 half for Dave Chesterkov, a 63 with a fill for Tom Pelkey. So do we have uh, Mr. Bassford's first name? Aaron. Aaron? Mm -hmm. All right, so Aaron Bassford. Thank you, Paul, or whoever got that for us. I remember, too. Oh, you, you knew you met? Good. It works. I don't think I've met him personally, I confess, but. Okay, Al Bassford is on the head pin, but takes off five now. Brendan O'Dowd on the left is on a spare. Oh, the ball dropped the ball. Just puts one on the fill, the 10 pin. He'll have to throw a strike ball to get a spare. And Aaron Bassford threw a great ball there. And the 10 didn't go. So there's Brendan. He's much closer to the head pin that time. But this will be an open box for him. 10 box for Aaron Bassford. And Brendan doesn't feel comfortable with his approach. Public address. Oh, oh and call the grievance committee. Ooh. Oh, well, well, we're the right division, so Brendan O'Dowd will continue. He got cut off by that public address. He didn't want to. And it was for the left division, correct? Yep, for the left division. Okay, we're very good. Nine box for Brendan O'Dowd. Uh, just a second. All right, Paul Grant. Don't tell me we're going to air the grievance out loud. <laughs> All right, so Paul no, no. Grant's going to speak. There's a grievance on lane 16. Apparently, the light came on and the ball was thrown. It was supposed to stop before the ball, and they got a strike in a close match. They want to know if we could see lane 16 at all. And can we see that back, replay that back at all, possibly? Uh, yeah. We don't have yet, a playback capability. Uh, yes, the footage is available. Lane 16 is visible on our camera. Go on to YouTube, and you can rewind it, and you can see the footage. Um, you cannot see the approach, but you can see the pin plate. And if it was a question of pin set or timing, that should be visible on there. We can, uh, the light is visible on our big feed. Yeah. Dave said if there was no interference, then it's good. This is interesting, folks. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's good then. The spike's good then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Back to you guys. Ah, there we go. So we got involved in a grievance committee hearing just then. That was just a question of whether uh, Penn had fallen. And meanwhile, we got nine and eight uh, for Brendan and Aaron, respectively, out of all that. Okay, so we were momentarily yeah. distracted with that. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure where we stand on the score at the moment. So just for the record, we got approached on that one. We would never uh, volunteer our information there. We don't usually interrupt with the bowler's affairs, but if they want to see the footage and, you know, it's on here, we would happily oblige, you know? It's a matter of record, and it's our pleasure to help out. Scotty Douglas, nice eight drop, and uh, Al Nelson, Unless it's on Candlepins for Cancer, which is a show we produce, and then we'd replay the crap out of whatever we want. <laughs> and uh, Nelson misses on the mark attempt. Scotty Douglas. Okay, he misses on that one too. So I'll keep up with the 
chat. We have some members of the committee over here discussing the situation. So it's a little distraction for us from the match. Yeah, seven and eight. Oh, no, seven no problem. We'll oh, get okay. it. We got it. Alan Nelson got a seven, and uh, Scott Douglas okay, got we're an back eight. On it. There we go. So interesting stuff. So Al Nelson coming up in his sixth box and takes out eight. Brendan O'Dowd. Seven and back. There's oh. a, or not Brendan, Scotty Douglas, another strike. Scotty Douglas is another strike. He's a strike machine today. Uh, yes, to your point, six strikes today. Including three. Uh, hang and on. And Al hang Johnson, on. Al Nelson, I'm sorry, not Al Johnson. Al Nelson takes out two. There was a third pin back there. It's tough to see. Mm. So he made a great bid on it, but nothing wrong with his ball. The pins just went around the five pin in the back. Yeah, uh, Scott Douglas has seven strikes today. That makes more sense. All right, Pins our score is current. Uh, yes, it is. All right, so accuracy on this thing. We got you. So again, and I'll remind you so Greg doesn't have to, we're not getting a feed on the scores. Greg is manually scoring this. So if we get sidetracked or di dis uh, distracted, it's possible for us to miss something. I'll mislead you all, <laughs> All right. <laughs> but we're not the official scorekeepers either, so our scores don't really matter. Yeah. So Kevin McNeely, only McNally the, on the right. We're only the committee assistants. Nice apparently. nine drop. Whoa! Tim Douglas trying to catch up with his brother in strikes. Yeah, no, I, I explained more. It's him, but McNally got the better break out of that. McNally sure did. I oh. don't know about that. Oh, yeah, that would. The darn wood, isn't it? And if you could lip read, I imagine it would be R-rated off of what he had to say there. Yeah. We'll keep our dialogue family friendly, but I can't sit, promise that for the bowlers, you know? It's their All world. Right, there we go. That's what will happen with that. You throw a great ball and yeah. to say it politely, you get taken advantage of by the pins. And uh, Timmy's not far behind on that category. And, and uh, those of you who are familiar with the Candlepin community do know that a lot of us get quite animated when we bowl. And a 10 box for Kevin McNally. Yeah, that would have been three straight for him. And a nice 10 box for Tim Douglas. And I'm not just excited because I know Tim. It just was a great shot to make that split. That was a tough shot. And, and he did it. So I, I I feel for Kevin McNally on that because that was, that was just a tough break to have the wood roll out like that. Yeah. Thanks. Right as I was building momentum. That's... Only All right. Oh, there's a, another Douglas strike. The brothers are combining for a lot of strikes here. And uh, nine pins back here as well for McNally. Kevin McNally, he's got the one, three, six. I don't know if I like that wood. Let's see what it does to him. No, he didn't. He was off. And um, that one he would probably say was on him because he just kind of let the ball go wrong. Yeah. Hard to say if it was actually on in the end, but yeah, see, because it was going to deflect away. Yeah, it was. Okay. Nine bucks. Nine bucks. Nine bucks for McNally, a strike for Tim Douglas. And a score check. Take a look, see, two, uh, two marks to three. In fact, for Hatcheman, overall in the string is 11 to six, including a Scott Douglas double, so it's really 12 to six. Pinning is actually exactly level in this case. So the marks are decisive once again. Both bowlers coming up for this next two boxes are on spares. That'd be Keith Beaupre and Scott Sorois. Scott Sorois from Skohagen, Maine. And uh, Keith Beaupre, he's still got pins wiggling, but it's a four horseman remainder, so he has a six fill. 90 after six. Scott Sorois ends up with a five fill on that and has the Kaliri right, which is the Kamrowski special with an eight pin, if Rick Kamrowski happens to be watching. And uh, one moment we'll respond to that, Ian. Ooh. And there's a spare for Sorois. And uh, 
Keith Beaupre on his attempt to make a 10 and does very nicely. So Ian McGregor has asked uh, what the nature of the grievance was, and I know you could hear it a whole lot better than I could. Uh, over to me. Yeah, there was a question of was Lane 16's uh, pin sweep in motion, uh, therefore does the strike count? Because uh, per the rules, if the reset light is on or the pin sweep is in motion, it doesn't count. And apparently the red light was on the entire time, and they were asking for us, well, can you see 16? And we can see here on our screens, all of you watching now, they're all 200 of you, thank you. So uh, You can see the red light. Uh, I don't know how visibly. far back it was, but you could rewind that on YouTube potentially. Yes. And I'm sure they have done if they wanted to go back. Th I, that's what they were doing. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, so Keith Not Beaupre. us, we're busy, but you can as well. Keith Beaupre punched out a spread eagle and went through the hole. So Rice put an eight fill on his spare, mm -hmm. left the five and seven and missed everything on the spare attempt. So Beaupre looking to clean up at least three pins here. And he settles for one for a five box. And beautiful Ooh. 10 by Sarice. That was a clean 5-7. Yeah, picking up five. This no wood involved. They still got a bigger hill to climb than that, but that's that's about a spares difference. That gives him a 10 box. All right, now we have Tom Pelkey yeah. and Dave Chesterkov. Coming into their sixth and seventh boxes. Dave Chesterkov with 51. Yeah. Tom Pelkey on a spare with 63 and a fill. By the way, I believe without exception, every single reset light works here at Moncton Fairlanes. I hope mo more centers will follow suit and, you know, put the red light in because some people will otherwise mash your button hoping for waiting to see if there's a reset otherwise because they don't know. So Pelkey put four on the six on a spare and, and Chesterkov may have the same similar situation that we saw before and we don't know for sure yet but the wood looks at a bad angle and he went to the right to try to avoid it and miss a spare. Pelkey goes to the left and misses his spare. That leaves one pin. Both have really ugly wood in front of them. Um, pretty much kind of have to just gently nudge the wood. Yeah. I'd sooner take Pelkey's. He can play low at least. There he goes. He's got good. it. Cap first for the 10. And a miss for Pelkey. So a 10 box for Chestakov, a 9 box for Pelkey, 78 to 61 after 7 for these two bowlers in favor of Pelkey. The question was whether someone was bowling over with a while the red light was on. That was it. I think Did the red light was staying on. It's not like the light was like flickering on and like turns off right after the reset was done. It was like not close. It was like on throughout. So Dave Chesterko goes to the right. So I'm told. Drops five. Tom Pelkey. He's off on the right and leaves a bunch. And no spare for Dave Chesterko. And uh, no spare for Tom Pelkey. And I, I don't know, Greg, if you were responding to Scott Henderson's comment? Yep. Okay, so you saw it too. Okay, mm -hmm. good deal. We're good on that. So both bowlers are spareless in the seventh. And Dave Chesterkov closes with an eight box for his, eight, uh, for his eighth box for 69. And Tom Palke with an eight box as well with a one five pin remaining. And that puts him at 86. So Chesterkov has a couple more boxes to come back. He's having a tough string. And Brendan O'Dowd is coming back up against Aaron ba It's Aaron Bassford, correct? That's right. Okay, thank you. So Brendan O'Dowd, after six, is a 51. Boom. Nice ball. And I again, beautiful pocket shot, no strike. Big cluster. Aaron Al was a little bit full on that one. Aaron, I'm sorry. And uh, took out three, or took out five, left with spread eagle minus a two pin. Brendan's got a cluster of five pins there. He's got to shoot straight at and uh, drills it, but too full. So Aaron went for the three, tried to kick one over. That's the right way to do that. Only got two.
Brendan yielding right of way. So what's Brendan got there? The 5-7. Mm -hmm. For a 10, maybe. And he's going to take the safe bet of playing the wood to get the 10, although I don't know if the wood's ever safe. And uh, Aaron tried to kick that over and almost got it and ended up with a nine box, both bowlers. And where did that ball come from? I'm not sure. Was that? Was that one of Brendan's? No, I thought. Oh, it came out of lane 15. That was interesting. So the other day in Millis, I can't remember who the bowler was for sure, but it's not terribly unusual to see a, a power bowler hit a pin into the next lane. Oh, I, I know who it was. It was, um, I got to remember the name now. He was bowling with, with me, actually. Took the pin and threw it into two lanes over. So you don't see that every day. Brendan O'Dowd drops eight. And he's... Looking at the seven and the nine with Wood, Aaron Bassford drops eight two, and he's got a probably a better leave, a four and a si or three and a six pin. Yeah, Brendan's talking about this one. There's one up high, but with the ball deflecting to both, really. We're having a team consultation, and Rich Lamone is coaching him, as is Timmy and Scott Douglas, and they're all having a conversation about this. Where do you go with this one? I well, look yes. at that. You go there. Way and matching out. spares for the bowlers. Brendan made a great bid. There's a lot of wood there, and it's tough to call what wood to use when you get into that situation. But a beautiful, beautiful shot. Yeah. And I see Ray Weatherby, and I see my friend Duncan McDougal both watching. I'm glad to see you guys. My voice is still holding out. Greg and I are here. And uh, Paul's looking for the mic again. So Now seems as good a time as any. Does that sound good? Um, yeah, but uh, we've got Scott Douglas on a strike again, so Sounds good. possible another double. I may yell if he does a double. <laughs> Uh-oh. Brace yourself, Dan Castle might get excited. You're kidding, I'm kidding, always kidding, exciting. kidding, kidding, kidding. Do you get excited? S Scotty Douglas, and that's definitely not a strike. He just took out the 10 pin. Oh, no. And Al Nelson. And there's a strike. It was in the other lane this time. Scott, he can still rip this apart. All right, three scores, three uh, matches gone. Final Academy Lane sweeps Team USA 8 0. They won by 162 pins. Uh, other action Central Park Lanes goes 4 and 4 with 2.64 winning the match. See, uh, 2.64 wins by about 33 pins or so. And one more final to report on, I think. Let's see. We have one more, I believe. Oh, Timmy just puts. Scotty puts five. Go on. That's a five box. That's it for now, folks. We have two finals. Actually, not three. We'll try to get more in before we sign up. We'll put all the posts on Candlepin Chat later tonight. And, of course, you can also follow along with the standings on LeagueSecretary.com. We're trying to say, circulate the link. Or if you just go to LeagueSecretary.com and find Fair Lanes, Moncton, New Brunswick. I guess again, Scotty, that's not bad. Oh, that's not terrible. He put, leaves a 1-7. Nelson on his first strike fill ball. Eight on the first ball, the one and two remain. You can look it up that way. And the link has been posted a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope we're, somebody does We're it trying again. our best. Candlepin Bowling Network Facebook has a link. Uh, oh, what post. a spare for Timmy Douglas. Still Scotty. Scotty, Scotty. I do that to them too sometimes. They know that I, I don't mix them up. But names. Yeah, we know. We know who up. they are. Yeah. yeah. I know who my kids are. I just might call them by the wrong name. <laughs> I have trouble with names. Yeah, Seems you know, to be an issue. Everyone's mind works differently, you know. And I have people, you know, sometimes I have people I know very well, and I have to think for a minute what their name is. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, it ain't getting better with age, but uh, otherwise, my aging mentally isn't going too badly, so I'm okay. Yeah, it's, it just does the consideration show through in the end, you know. Some people say I have too much information. The, the effort's being made. Well, that's probably, that. that's probably true, but that's not a knock on you. No, I, I, I'll, I'll take <laughs> that. I'll take that. <laughs> that's Timmy. Look at that split. Uh, Ooh, and Timmy's on, Timmy's on. Timmy's on a strike tip here. That one. How about? I think with his ball, he's got a shot of making this. 
<laughs> in the shaking meantime, his head. McNally dropped nine. Look at that. What I tell you? Oh, everything but the seven pin. So a nine fill in the strike for Tim Douglas. And now uh, Scott McNally is looking for a mark of his own. There it goes. No problem. Third of the string. Yeah, it's like when somebody, Timmy looking for a 10. He gets his 10. It's like somebody once told me that I had a face made for radio. I yeah. think that's a compliment. Oh, right? that'll, that'll chest that. No, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Hayser, like seeing you on the on the feed here. All right, Timmy Douglas with a big ball that took out six. Four horsemen right, left. McNally on a spare. And a nice fill with an eight. Oh, and he's going to look back again like, what do I have to do here? Come on. Yeah, I mean, he's throwing some great balls, and, and he gets – Really, really screwed on that <laughs> single pin. No other way to say it. Now you want me to shoot on this vertical piece of wood. It's kind of getting ridiculous. All here. right. We'll hang on. We'll see if Timmy Douglas can pick up the spare here first. Oh, that and first. Paul, uh, Paul would like the microphone again. When doesn't he? <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, there we go. McNally made that spare. Making me work for it here. Okay, and an eight box for Tim Douglas. So McNally deserved that one, I have to tell you. And uh, now we're on to Paul for an update. Okay, updates, other scores. Kingswood Bulletproof, six points to two over Harry's All-Stars. Final score, 18.46 to 17.82. Other scores, Fenway Academy, 18.12 to 18 away, a four pin win. They end up splitting the points, 4-4, with the Outlaw Rides, MCW. A-plus accounting, sweeps, spikes chimney services, 18-13 to 17-07, 8 -0 win. Avon Valley Lanes against Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike, takes six of the eight points, 17-67 to 17-39. Couple more, TBD Bolarama takes two points, Massachusetts team goes 6 and 2, 17 17 to 16 54. Central Park Lanes goes 4 and 4 with 2.64, 2.64, 1708, 1695. And that's it for now. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks, Paul. And we'll be providing all of those scores once the matches are completed and they're posted. Yeah, it might be a link later. So, Sir Royce uh, misses fair attempt. Go pray. No Ooh. doubt about that one. Picked up the four horsemen left for a spare. I go on the outside. There's a little bit of doubt to be pedantic. I, it looked good all the way down. It was like all one singular motion on that one. And we have a ball come. No, no, we do. Yeah, we do have a ball down there. Sitting in the middle of the lane. <laughs> Just sitting there. I think it's tired. Thank you, Bill yeah. Olson. You got it. That's strange, exactly correct. Strange place to lie down for a nap. That's one way to... That's like what I do, you know? Yeah. Standing on the other end from these bowlers is probably the worst place to be, but the pins don't, <laughs> didn't seem to get the memo. Didn't seem to get the memo. So Royce, solid head pin hit. Oh, yeah, there's your wake-up call for 9-10. Oh, and Beaupre puts seven on his fill. Six. You see six? I didn't see that other pin there. There's a lot of people in front of us here. Surprise. Scott Royce on a spare attempt, looking at the nine and the 10. With some wood there that may be a friend, maybe an enemy, and it ain't no friend. So he'll be open in this box. Beaupre trying to pick up that mark, comes close, leaves a single pin. All right, so he's Scott Royce has a little more favorable wood this time. And uh, nothing doing, so an eight box for him. And Beaupre has a nine box. Yeah. You know. And that completes their string, 130 
Yep. For Keith Beaupre and 113 for Scott Sorois. Beaupre averaged 123 for 369. Scott Sorois at uh, 344. Uh, about shy of a 115 average. Uh, the, you know, the string is still in the balance. You know, we need a reason to believe from uh, Stars and Strikes here, but they do have the boxes left to turn this around. It's and only say 20 the pins. Maybe the fills go dramatically their way. I think totals pretty nearly out of reach, not entirely. Largely. Ooh. Dave Chesterkov throws a big ball there and drops nine, leaves a 10 pin. And Tom Pelkey misses on his attempt to spare this the four horsemen. Chesterkov misses a spare opportunity, goes wide to the left of the 10 pin. And Pelkey closes with a 10. He wasn't too thrilled about that being a third ball rather than a second ball. I don't blame him. And Chesterko goes in the channel for a nine box. So both bowlers are spareless in the ninth frame. Chesterko really, really wanting a spare here. He's only a 78, low string for him. And Pelkey with only a 96 after nine, and that's not a big string for him either. It is 18 pins, however you count them. And Paul's coming back on. Uh, one more score update for you. In that controversial match, Bears Row Bolarama takes six points to two of a bowling ball mafia by seven pins, 17 17, 16, uh, 5 to 17, 58, I believe it was. Seven pins they win by. And so six points to Babea's row, bowl around of a bowling ball mafia. All right, thank you for the update, Paul. And you just saw Dave Chesterkov make a bid for that spare in the 10th and got the wood deflected his ball. So no spare for him and a nine box for him and an eight box, seven box. Yeah, seven, seven it is. Pelkey had a pretty, pretty decent day. Three strikes and five spares, but just ran out of gas on the end there. Yeah, so Chesterkov has a disappointing 87. Had some good shots. Had a few that he should have had. And um, I missed I missed that. What did um, uh, Pelkey have, 103? Uh, Pelkey had 103, that's right. Okay. Three straight total, 325. Dave Chesterkov, 315. All right, now we're looking at Aaron Bassford. <laughs> and he was on a spare fill on that, and that's an eight fill. Mm -hmm. Good one. And Brendan O'Dowd. Oh, he's feeling it now. He's he's back on. He's looking to make some noise here. And when Brendan gets going, he can make noise. Believe yeah. me, I know that from one-on-one -on -one competition with him. Yeah. That's right at a chance there. He knew it. That's a vital response by Brent, Brendan. He hit. Well, Brendan's got some interesting wood there. He could try to kick the pin over. It might be better to go for the wood, which I think he's doing. And yeah. it worked. Double cap. Nice shot. He was looking at the cap of both of those pieces of wood, and he picked up. He, he went for both of them and split yeah. them over. That's beautiful. That was a cute shot. I liked it. That's a classic Brandon O'Dowd. Oh, that, that very smooth ball, very precise. Very focused. Aaron Bassford. Oh, he, he slips a little bit and he ends up over on the four pin taking out three. Brendan O'Dowd on the fill. And we have six in the fill, a four horsemen right. Aaron Bassford on his second yeah. ball. Solid hit, doesn't get the spare. Brendan reportedly was, uh, his dearest actually came on and said like uh, he was sick right before the competition. He routinely wears a mask, but he it, genuinely was in this case. Yeah, he generally wears a mask when, yeah. he, when he's at bowling, which maybe is a smart move sometimes. I know for me it probably would be. I didn't mean genuinely like di it's disingenuous too. Oh, so Not closing that out and a nice nine box for Aaron Basford. Great bid on picking up that 10. And Brendan going for the six and the 10 for a 10 box. And I think that was good. I couldn't see whether it went in the channel or not. Yep. Uh, 
Let's call it good for now. 103, I'm pretty sure. Yep, that's not on the board as such. All right, 103 one for O'Dowd and 97 for Bassford. Here's, here's Paul. Paul Gratz. All right, a couple of quick updates. Maria Sub smokes Oakland Park by 190 pins, 8 0. The only team to go undefeated, 24 0. One close one. New England flooring struggled earlier, 4 0. Up 72 up to 2, but they're up 4 right now. Late in the third string, two marks to none in their favor. New England flooring over Prosperity U. All of the scores final information on Caleb Chat later on. Al Nelson drives, drops a big strike there. And Scott Douglas on a fill, puts on three. He's off the two pin. He gets the four horsemen left and a triangle and a right. Ugly, ugly leave, but makeable. Just getting all of them will go as a challenge. Here's a spare attempt, and he's uh -oh. off on the two pin. Wasn't close to the head pin where he needed to be. Now it's just come out of this box with a eight or nine. Yeah, this is just lead defense, so. Triangle right? Yep. And it's a seven for uh, Nearly made the six, seven, 10. Yikes. He's, these guys are the fourth bowlers, and uh, it's pretty much slipping away from stars and strikes unless something really big happens in the next couple of boxes. They do have a couple of marks. The, the real estate is there because Scott's market negated, but Al's gonna probably have to double. Oh, I crossed over. Well, he's getting a closer to double. Timmy Douglas, or Scotty Douglas, sorry. He's on the head pin, takes out seven. Three, six, and four are left. That was a powerful ball from Al. Proper pocket hit might have taken it. Well, look at that wood on the right of the three pin. I think if he uses that yeah. as a guide, he's got a shot here. He's going to the inside, though. Maybe not intentionally. But that's how I would have shot it anyway. O'Dowd. Oh, he's bouncing the pins around good, but the four pin remains. And yep, he's he's going there that time and uh Tip. Oh gets it. The gears were turning. A little bit on the slow side, but it's a ten box for Al Nelson and a nine box for Scott Douglas. So Scott Douglas is bowling third prior, so fifty nine. So I one, have him as a 379. Yeah, but 120 for Scott Douglas and a 107 for Al Nelson. And now our anchor bowlers come up to finish this round. We'll just mention, folks, that this will be the last match of the day, but tune back in tomorrow. It's 9 a.m. Atlantic and 8 a.m. Eastern, and off from there, 9 a.m. local time, GMT minus 4, UTC minus 4, <laughs> call it what you want, <laughs> minus 4. We'll be here. Scott McNally on the right in lane 14. It's quieted down a lot here. Well, McNally's on a fill and puts six on that previous spare. Timmy Douglas trying to put this away. Solid ball. Split. Three, six, four. McNally looking for a spare here on the four horsemen. Just off mm. the head pin. All right, Timmy Douglas on the object pin, but two full punches it through. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. And a 10 box for McNally. So that you're always in the know about. And an eight box for Tim Douglas. You got it. And Paul's back. Last box, Paul. Officially yet, but unofficially yet, but looks like New England Florence is going to take a sweep of eight over Prosperity U. They're up 28 plus a bonus ball, four bucks to go. They were leading by 72 coming in, so they're going to take eight points more than likely unless something hap disastrous happens. New England Florence eight over Prosperity U. Back to you guys to wrap it up. Oh, and we're just in time, Scott McNally drops a strike. Might be too little Stri too late, but yeah. it helps. Strike was the way to get back at it, if anything. And Tim is on, uh, very full on the head yeah. pin that time. He takes out five. Uh -huh. Spread eagle minus two. Timmy needs a pin. This is not over yet. He's got some great wood there, I think. I think if you hit the three pin in the wood, there's a good ch there's a chance that could carry over. That's where he's going. He's mm -hmm. off the three pin, though. Oh, got a pin this. Otherwise, the strike fill becomes a little easier. Not a lot of margin on that. He really had to hit the tip of the, the, the right side of that pin. So now he'll uh, probably go for the two. Yes, that's a very good 
That's the only thing now, to do, I think, and that's what he's doing. for the game state because now it's nine. Look at what happens to the score as we light that up. Yep. So 17. it's a 10-pin game right now, and Scott McNally is on a fill. So a strike here and a, no, something big could change the direction we've been going on this. McNally on the three pin, takes out four on his first ball. Wait, what does that say? Hang on a second. McNally's going ahead. Tim's waiting for a ball to come back, and he puts eight on the strike. That'll do it. Eight on the strike. I'm going to look for the final confirmation, but Hatchman's high fiving. I think they've got an 8 0 based on my count. Let's see. Was it 5 5 5? Yep, it's a two pin win. It's all scores confirmed as you see it here. 8 came, nothing Hatchman. Came down to the last, the fill in the last box. Yep, the fill was eight. He needed 10. That was that. 10 to tie. Final scores. Let's see them here. It's wow. a sweep. What, what a valiant finish that was. They fought back McNally. and they fought, they fought hard. They really did. 135. The Stars and Strikes team, nothing to be ashamed of here. They fought hard. Well, pray that powerful charge out of position number one. We'll take a look at totals. Remember, asterisks to note anyone who was uh, substituted in. Line breaks there. Don't worry about that. Um, but Beaupre 369 leading the way. That's the big story out of it. Uh, Scott Douglas, I think, had 379 based on how I calculated that. So, oh, Ian I, I, Keith. Stephanie, thank you for reminding me. I I know that. I've got a sheet here, but I, I apparently wasn't referring to the sheet at the time in the heat of the moment. So I, I apologize for misnaming. Fantastic. All right, folks. Uh, we wish you a pleasant good evening, uh, and please uh, join us again tomorrow whenever you can this week. In the worst case scenario, you know, we'll be back here uh, every day, Tuesday through Saturday, starting 9 a.m. Atlantic. Uh, but on behalf of Dan Castle, on behalf of Paul Grant, my name is Greg Gouillard. Thank you so much. For, and on behalf of Bob Lee as well, uh, thank you for watching this presentation of Candleton Bowling Network and the ICC International Candleton Championships. Until next time, so long. Give me a second while I take this out. Wait for the delay.